Well, uh, I really don't feel like opening up the show. Let's just get straight to it, man. Um, I ain't really. Got, <laughs> um, well, oh, I, I, I do. I do. I, 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 this what is Friday Madness. Like, we ain't got to have no structure. I'm tired of fucking structure anyway. To hell with the intro. Let's just get straight to it, man. <laughs> AKA, what's up? What's up, people? Welcome to the show. Go ahead, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna talk about no pleasantry. We ain't, we ain't opening up, ain't none of that shit. Uh, everybody just sit back. I know y'all probably got a glass of Hennessy, some Mo, uh, Moet, uh, whatever the hell you want to drink. Bill, cheap ass Bill, Bud Light, um, IPA. What you got there, uh, K Style? Oh, oh, I got some sweet water tonight. I got some, some sweet water. water. Hey, man. Hey. I, I, IPA. We got people that got some Kool-Aid, some, some some apple juice, whatever the hell you drink, water. <laughs> uh, but let's get to these, the real, am I saying the right case times? Am I saying the, this, the real roll call? Is that? The real roll call. <laughs> there we go. You want to go ahead and call them out, Mike? Go ahead and call out the mm -hmm. name of I go told you it ain't, it ain't no structure today, so you just gonna get what you're gonna get. You got Blizz, Blizz, Blizz 818, Prove It, Tail Sports and Gaming, Joseph Martinez, Asia Green. Everybody, Joseph Martinez. I'm gonna Martinez. That's what I said. You said Joseph Martinez. I'm like, wait a minute. I don't know what they <laughs> Hey, hey, Joseph hey. Thornton, bro. <laughs> We tripping Joseph already. I, all I saw was Joseph, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Cartier Walker, Emmanuel. Uh, how the hell the hell you said that last name? Uh, Ju uh, <laughs> Sean, Sean Wiley, Ivan Brown, Lowski, Prince Kell, 89, Michael Walker. Uh, I'm tired of damn reading. All right. Uh, right we, we get a couple more names. We got this. Atlanta, <laughs> we got Atlanta Nation. We got Cartier Walker. We got the real, real Brian Peoples. Um, we got Leo 123. We got Nick. And we're going to do a couple more. King Quest 710 and Dan the Man. So y'all can tell the FK style. FK style spot. I, 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 don't, I, I don't know how to do as good as he is. So y'all got to get FK style spot. <laughs> oh, Hey man, we hey hey we got we gotta hype the energy up a little bit. That's what to do around That's here. Everybody cool, come to see Mad Mike. I gotta bring the right energy. Unless y'all piss oh, me man. off, then there's another story. Everybody just try to get me pissed off. That's all. <laughs> Nobody come to see me. Ah oh, bullshit. <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Hey man, tell the people who you be at the bottom. Who 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 are you? Let, hey, let everybody man. know who you be. Hey at. man, this is Marquise, man, representing four seven eight. You know what I'm talking about Mac Town, straight from the war town. Hey, but out in Cali, getting holding it down. So hey, I'm just here to bring the energy, bring the noise, man. I'm gonna shout out, uh, shout out Peanut, Frank Cobb. I see you off in the chat too. Mm -hmm. You know, doing your thing. Always represent. You know what I mean? Definitely. You gonna be got to be on here one day to come. Uh, let the people hear your voice. Another bright mind of the Falcon Nation. So let's go. Hey, that means the invitation is there, bro. Yeah, they do it. Oh, yeah. Come on in. Yeah, hey, they said they got two things in this world. You either a hooker or you're a looker. You know what I mean? Yeah, pick you <laughs> <laughs> that man sound like them Don Juan. What like that? Hey, man, I'm just saying, baby. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to say, boy, I'm about to say, what the, um, the whole marching from the back coming in. Hey, there, like, we're going, it's, it's, this is kid friendly. You know what I mean? It's before. It's only five o'clock over here, so it's still. It's still uh, we wait for the when the uh, lights go off. We're gonna get it cracking. Yeah, yeah Mac Town Lowski, you see it? Yeah, make it, make yeah. it. That's what Mac Town is, Lowski. Lowski. He's repping yeah. from the Mac, so, from the make, make it. <laughs> man, why, Mike? What you got for us, man? What you got for us? Hey, man. Um, I just get straight into it, man. This is. Something that I absolutely love. I, I love this. Um, <laughs> my damn time. Somebody, something about time somebody did something. Um, in case you're probably under a rock if you have not heard, um, I, we actually released a video earlier today. Um, the Falcons released it also, where Dean Pease essentially, um, he he pretty much just put a lot of intelligent 
uh, coaches um, in check. Uh, what am I talking about? We're talking about a lot of these, you know, armchair GMs, armchair coaches. They feel as though that they know more than, you know, the NFL coaches who have been doing it for at least 30, 40 years. Guys like Dean Pease, who has, you know, essentially won championships with his scheme. Um, D, D led asked the stupid question. I, I like it, it when you really look at it, it really is a dumb question. It's like the Falcons <laughs> are one of the better blitzing team in the league, and they've not only got a few, they've got uh, I don't know the exact number. Um, and I wish I would hit would have done that, but when you look at their blitz, and again, they're one of the better blitzing teams in the league. and uh, d asked the question, should the Falcons blitz more? And <laughs> when they were blitzing more, uh, the first game, for example, uh, against Philadelphia, they were sending everybody from uh, all, you know, all, all, all over the place. They were sending corner safeties, linebackers from all over the place. And he kind of dialed back from that. And we started to see the team play a lot better. They're 12th in rushing and 14th in, in passing, but they're giving up points. Um, I think they're like ranked somewhere in the lower uh, thirds of the NFL as far as the points are concerned. Um, me personally, I feel as though that that has a lot to do with penalties and just you know uh, starting field position. But um, they put them in place. That just be, they just put D led in place. Do you guys think Dean Pease is actually bullying the media, or? This is something that the media need. They need it to be checked because, again, we know a lot of people who write these articles and then they put out. They got a huge following on, on you know, platforms like the AJC, uh, Fox, you know, uh, Sports Illustrated, a lot of these big platforms. And they got their following. They get a lot of people uh, to come read their things. Do you think this is bullying or it's about damn time somebody put the media in a place? You gotta, I mean, you gotta, uh, I mean, then D Lib, uh, D Lando, whatever the fuck his name is, led better, bad water. He's been asking dumbass questions for a long time now. So it's finally, it's nice to have somebody that's not like, uh, Mike Smith is very PC. You know what I mean? He was very buttoned up. He didn't really say nothing. So it was, uh, Dan Quinn. Neither one of them really, you know what I mean? They didn't challenge nothing. They didn't really come with nothing. They were just kind of like company men and just go in and just, you know, what, try to be all poly- political and shit. Dan Pease ain't that dude, you know what I mean? He in his 70s, he ain't got nothing to lose. He bringing that, <laughs> he telling it like it is. You ask a dumbass question, he gonna, he, gonna, he gonna let you know. He gonna light you up, he gonna come with it. So it's good to see somebody, I don't think it's bullying. You know what I mean? He's just speaking his mind, he exerting himself. You know what I mean? That's what dominance look like. That's what we trying to do on the field. So it gotta, hey, if it ain't in you, it ain't in you. And evidently he got it, so. Mm-hmm. I'm about to say bullying well. Um, nah, nah bro. Um, let like I said, let 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 better. Um, uh, he tried to he tried to throw his coaching credentials at a guy that has coached championship teams and been in the game yeah. for thirty plus years. And try to throw your uh defensive credentials, which was back in two thousand six, where you was coaching at Dunkin' Donuts University. Nobody knows what (laughs) because the issue the issue came to the point was he was trying to tell Dean Pease how to do his damn job. So is it really bullying or is it him defending his position? Now it seems like bullying because Dean Pease is um (laughs) Dean Dean Pease is a straight shooter. Like, Like I said, our coaching staff now are like literally straight shooters now. Like we ain't got the Rex, we ain't got Rex Ryan, but we got Rex Ryan minded type folks where they gonna tell you how the hell they feel. Yeah. And like I said, D led he all like every time it's like he it's like he been trying DP since he got here. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. And, and and it's gonna get to a point where he gonna slap the shit out this motherfucker every time he asks him a question. <laughs> As he should. As he should. You know I mean? Um, I was about to say, um, uh, if you had a if you had a video of that, um, I would like to hold on. I'm gonna see if I I think I got it. Hold on, 
I'm gonna let I'm gonna let y'all hear this. I'm gonna let y'all hear this if I can find it. Well, I can't find it. God damn it. But if y'all ain't seen the damn video, the shit's hilarious, bro. It is like it's like oh, little about the TV plan itself. Yeah, yeah. Just 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 play a little sound of it. Okay. So they can he, so they can hear this um this um um ass whooping wow. verbally that he yeah. took. <laughs> yeah, he no took way. he took. He took that ass with him. He's gonna cry in the car. For sure. Nah, that dude, yeah. no, that dude, that dude finna turn his resignation letters in from the AJC and he finna go up there to Chicago. That's that's what um hold on. Who said who who said that? Who said that in the chat? I mean he should. I mean, um, what, has he, what has he brought to when anything Atlanta Falcons as a beat writer? I mean, who has read his material and been like, oh, this is good content? You know what I mean? When has he brought something, like any kind of thing to to the Atlanta Falcons organization that has been like, oh, this is, you know what I mean? D you see the article by D-Led? You know what I mean? You heard that something you said? Like, nah. I mean, nah. Either Paul right, or Let me see if you can hear it. So what's, Go ahead. What's, what's, can you hear it? Got to turn it up some. Turn it up some, uh. Okay, let me go to it. Is 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 I don't know why uh Atlanta Falcons uh, Atlanta Falcons there's sometimes it'd be incredibly low where you can barely hear it. Yeah, uh yeah, I I I, I can't I can't say it, but yeah, it like I say it just it it just uh you think you can put it near the microphone or you think you need to yeah, find I it. Right? Did, and I still didn't do anything. <laughs> Oh, hold, hold, hold up. But y'all can y'all go ahead and keep talking. I'm gonna see if I can bring it up. This shit was hilarious. It, like I said, it was yeah. it was one of those situations where you know <clears throat> where I'm just gonna be honest. Yeah, we get labeled here at Atlanta Falcons Nation bullies because we ask simple questions and we ask people to come on the show when you have a certain opinion about not only Matt Ryan, but just the scheme. What do you know about, you know, the offense, how the offense is run, um, why you think these way, uh, think this way, and it comes off as bullying. It's not bullying. It's trying to not – like trying to figure out where you're – comfortable. like what, what are you thinking? And, you know, we got a guy like Dean, Dean Pease who's doing exactly that. He's trying to educate. He's not trying to do anything else. He's trying to educate people that, you know, who I always say, I hold, I don't hold the fans to a high standard. I hold a lot of these content creators to a higher standard because guess what? These people have a, a huge platform and they're misleading people with this bullshit ass narrative that they're painting. And they're not getting people, giving people the truth. So like I when I see guys like D Led getting chunked off and getting educated and they don't like it oh it's heaven it's heaven for me yeah yeah i mean as you said earlier it's definitely not bullying man they need another uh adjective to describe it because it's just anytime somebody share their opinion or share their mind and it may be something that you may not agree with doesn't mean that they're attacking you or that they're being a bully it's just y'all got different opinions you know what i mean that's what makes us who we are individuality so um and d -Led, yeah, for him to come up and talk about his his <laughs> alleged his alleged um, coaching, previous coaching stint at the community college of Cobb County, uh, not community college, community center, a community <laughs> really? Cobb County community center. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, you know what I mean? He was reigning defensive coach of the year, so Cobb County community center. So you know, what I mean, I guess that's what he bringing on experience. You know, what I mean, calling up those zero blitzes and all that zero coverages and shit. <laughs> <laughs> so. That boy, that boy coached at the YMCA, boy. Hey, I'm telling you. Hey. Yo, you know what's, what's crazy about that? That's something that you just said that kind of piqued my interest. Is is, and this is where as a fan, like this is see, this is why I say even you know as far as like fans have to be held accountable for the crap that they even say because everybody say, oh, I have a right to my opinion, but when you're going to not only platforms groups uh and, and and spreading this junk like you got to be checked you spreading yeah. bullshit that's not true 
So it's not a, a matter of, oh, I have my, you know, a right to my opinion. Yeah, you have a right to your opinion on your shit. Don't come to my <laughs> platform. <clears throat> we don't talking that crazy shit. You know it is not true, but you want to spread it because it's your opinion. And that, mm -hmm. again, there's a fine line between having your opinion and spreading your dumb ass opinion. All right. If your shit is dumb, if you feel like you're right, come on the show. Let us see, let us hear why you believe so. I want to hear why you think. All right. Because again, I, we've we've done plenty of times, even tonight. All right. We're gonna we're gonna let a few people come on tonight to kind of get see you know why you think the way you think if you want to come on. All right. Um to you know, just just let us know because it's not all about Mad Mike and Kevin. You know what I'm saying, Marquis? We want to hear yeah. different point of views, but if your point yeah. of view has a hole in it, then you gonna get smoked like D. Led. So at the end of the day, man, just because you think you have an opinion doesn't mean you're right, man. Yeah. Right. Oh, oh, did 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 you see the tweet that D. D. Led had put out? He said, yeah, ahead, let, let me read it. Let me read it out to the people. He said, figured out why Dean P's got all in his tizzy over my pressures question. <laughs> Overall, the Falcons have 10 sacks, 21 hurries, and 15 quarterback hits. Only the Chiefs and Jaguars have fewer sacks than the Falcons. Mm. Pointed out Grady affected the passer on Foyer's pick, too. Mm. Mm. Hey, so what do you say about that? Do you think, I mean, you think that, uh, is he saying, he, so he's saying pretty much well, the defense underperformed, the pass rush is underperformed, well, which. This is why I say it was a dumbass question because, because you can sit back and you can blitz every play. You can get hurries every play just by sending the house at somebody and hurrying the quarterback to get rid of the ball. But again, that's what you're saying. You want to put yeah. these guys in a position where they gain confidence and not lose confidence. So you out here just blitzing and they continuously getting gassed every time they blitz, then who really the dummy? All right, just because you're aggressive and just because you're continuously blitzing and putting these guys in position like a Fabian Rowe. We saw Fabian Rowe when they got when when they were blitzing as much as they were, he kept getting smoked. He got smoked against Philadelphia. They were just going at him the whole entire game. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, why are we really blitzing? Hold on. Okay, I, think, I, think, I think I found it. Hold on. Let me see if, I, let me see if it plays right. It's all low. It's low. Yeah, it's low. What, so what's, what is the question part of that? Uh, can you why? You think that helps the secondary putting pressure? Oh, yeah, got your interception last week. Where'd you coach secondary? Uh, uh, huh? Smyrna, 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 Okay, and if you're in man coverage and you're not playing man very good and you pressure, is there more pressure now on the secondary if you don't get there than if there's not? That's correct. Okay, you answered my question. <laughs> so we tried pressuring against Philly. How'd that work? How'd that look? How'd it look? It didn't look too good. Okay, so I told you a couple weeks ago we had to back off some of the stuff that we had to do because we weren't getting there. We weren't running things quite correctly, so we had to clean some stuff up and make it simpler. Okay, so that's what we've done. Okay, so you guys get all into this pressures and sacks and all this stuff. Been doing this forever, and it's not based on. First of all, if you run a pressure, you better get there. That's the number one thing about pressure. It's not about the secondary. It's about the pressure. If you aren't getting there, you're now hanging the secondary out to dry more than you did if you didn't pressure, right? Is that right or is that wrong? That's correct. That is correct. So if we're not getting there in pressures, which we weren't, then why would I want to hang the secondary out to dry when I get a different secondary in there almost every down? Has that been the case? 
in the secondary. Have we had different rotating parts in the secondary these last three weeks? Yes. yes. Have we won two out of the last three weeks? Yes. Okay. You answered my question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you want to, he wants you to go away from the shit that's actually not uh helping. Like you you want us to go away from the stuff that's helping us win games, which is blitzing the less, just to blitz more to satisfy your needs. Like that's crazy. Cause the thing, the main thing that you have to do is like I say, even when you're blitzing, you have to pick your spots and they have to execute on those blitzes. Like if you blitzing 60, 70% of the time, and especially when you have a D line outside of Grady Jarrett that's not consistently holding up offensive linemen, mm -hmm. like, dude, you, <laughs> you, you literally trying to <laughs> hang the secondary out the dry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at the end of this point, man, I mean, D led just, you know, shit, he got what was coming to him. You know, you ask that question, you try to apply a little, as he say, a little pressure. It really wasn't no pressure. He did more. The only thing he really did was agitate the MP. <laughs> and uh and you know and, and it showed so but he got educated like like mike said earlier though he educated him at the end of the day he even told about the principles of the zone you know what i mean he said hey look you know what i mean if i bring more people then how does that work with the zone coverage you know what i mean is there gaps in the zone how, how many personnel are we changing so it's been a lot of you know uh, it has it's been a lot of uh instability for us the personnel injuries and things that unfortunately has been happening so and uh, he doing he doing the best with what he got Exactly. That's the whole concepts of hot reads. A hot read is based on where the pressure is coming. So if your pressure is coming from this side, guess what? The hot read is from the exact same side. So that's that's the reason why you're talking about, you know, whether uh, if you blitz, that's is that zone going to be open? Which is yes. So if you're sending blitz, it's not you just send it. You better get there because if if you don't get there only a matter of time before that ball is going to get completed so that's why at the end of the day he was talking about confidence you got guys like you got guys like uh fabian moreau um young guys uh williamson who's been put in there you got uh avery yeah. williams also these guys young richie grant like you're trying to build these guys confidence so if they continually you know they you send them on blitzes or you sending someone else's on blitz uh, on a blitz and you know we know that those guys aren't as good as the AJ drill so if they're not um if they're not as good as the cover guys them guess what it's only a matter of time before they get it so it's like it's all about getting these guys it's all about getting these guys confidence up so the more yeah. the confident they get the better they're gonna uh the better they're gonna perform man King Quest said he was the uh coach at Bishop Seekamore. <laughs> oh Lord. Cardi Walker came with no, he said he was coaching the little giants. <laughs> well, alpha alpha. Boy, boy, please, boy. He he about he was about as relevant as Al Bundy talking about he scored four touchdowns in the national title game, boy. He's Al Bundy. <laughs> Al Bundy Man. Hey. Our buddy lived and died by that four touchdown game at the championship <laughs> game in high school. He lived and died by that. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the one thing that that we really saying is um uh, like you can have your opinion and like I said, you can say, well, it's how you feel. But if you got somebody that's been doing it for a long time and you're trying to tell them how to do their job. And they've been doing this thing a lot longer. Like I said, D led, yes, he may have been a secondary coach of the year up in Smyrna somewhere. I don't even know. I ain't even, I don't think he said a damn school. He just said Smyrna. You're in the media for you're in the media for a reason, bro. Because if yeah. it was that, if they if it was that big a deal, your ass would still be coaching right now. What did Kim Tumbo say? No, 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 no. Yeah, man. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, Tevon Turner, man, we're gonna we're gonna rest D Lab. We're gonna put D Lab to rest. Uh, <laughs> we don't, we don't. You know what I mean? Hey, what do you think of? Uh, what do you do with really at the next season? What do y'all think about that? What y'all think we do with really at the next season? 
It depends. It depends on the rest of the season. Because right now, that's why I said you ain't seen enough. Because I know um people were talking about trading him before the trade deadline. But the issue is, is this is the first season you've seen him without Julio. And the thing about it is, you haven't really seen enough. So, like, what value are you really gonna get from him? Because teams right now are not looking at giving up first and second round. Hell, maybe even third round picks based on potentially being the number one. They want to like, like, like this is different. This NFL is different now because these coaches and these GMs ain't got time. You got to be on point from every move you got to make, got to be on point, or you're going to get your ass fired. Um, yeah. so like I said, it's, it's, it's just going to depend on how it pans out the rest of the year. Yeah, um, I mean, so far he he's been looking real pedestrian. You know, um, he hasn't done anything to help his stock. And the rest of these teams see the same thing we see, and the coaching staff see. And uh, then, like you said, they're not going to offer. His stock is low. It's probably lowest it's ever been, um, as far as trade value. You know, it's, right. it's, you might get a third, fourth. You know, if Julio got a second, really right now probably gets you four round pick. You know what I mean? And at the most, you probably hope for is a fourth round with the conditions. Like, oh, if you need some playing time, you know, but where them ankles, where them ankles uh, built up, man, mm -hmm. really, I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to do it. So I think we, we ride this year out with him. Um, it's either going to be either we resign him for either. I think what he, what's going to end up happening is it happening is he's going to play himself into a uh, team friendly contract, you know, that that big money that he was expecting and, and projecting to get based on his previous performance showing right now what he showed unless he turned around like you said k style there's a lot of football left so he very well could turn it around and right. have one of the set great second halves put together you know put together a strong second half of the season you'd be like well damn like all right maybe he is number one but um he just hasn't impressed thus far right yeah. They don't need to go down that stigma of um <clears throat> well if I if I say if they're gonna even if he doesn't have a great great season, yeah, like the only thing I see the Falcons may do, they may franchise tag him. Mm. I, yeah. I don't think I don't think that's a good I, I, idea, mm -hmm. but yeah, I, if I, it, I, um hmm. but that's 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 real risky right there. That take real money. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's a the, the the yeah. money is there. Um, like I said, the money will be there this off season. So it's not so much that it's how much of the money that you want to, you know, yeah. delegate to giving to Calvin really. And at this point in time, at this point in time, from what we've seen so far, there's no way in hell I'm resigning to him. I'm just gonna be honest. Um, we can get a better um, production, as we've seen, from a rookie receiver. Uh, we've seen Jamal Chase and what he, how he turned his um, quote-unquote struggles around. Yeah. Uh, Kyle, mm. uh, Kyle Pitts, we've seen what he's done. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of guys, uh, especially at the tight end position. Um, when you have a guy like Arthur Smith who – his offense is pretty much predicated off what he does with his his receivers, uh, his tight end, and his his running back. So, does he really need a Calvin uh, Calvin Ridley? He does, but he's not giving us Calvin Ridley numbers in production. So, at this point, um, what do we do with Calvin uh, after? It's a long season. I'll just say that it's a long season. I don't know. I want to finish it out, but just based on right now, um, I'm trading him during the draft. If I can trade him, just based on what I've seen to up until this point, I'm mm. trading him uh, as soon as the last team, the last game of the NFL season happens. I'm getting on the phone and I'm looking for a trade partner. I'm not wasting no more time just based on what I've seen so far. 
I still yeah. believe that he can turn it around. He can turn it around. He does have the talent to turn around. But mm -hmm. until you show show us what you can do, because this is a new scheme. No, no more is 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 it catered to the receivers like a uh, former friend, aka Dirk Cutter, does. He gonna make sure his receivers get the ball, but he's gonna get the receivers the ball in a safe environment. And this offense, you're gonna have to be physical. This team, you're gonna have to be physical. And right now, he's not showing that. So, um, I, like I said before, he he does have the talent. I believe he will turn it, but. I can sit up and tell you about what I believe all day. We can tell you about what we believe. We need to see that shit on the field. I don't. Yeah. I don't want. I don't want to wish anymore. I'm tired of wishing. I'm tired of making predictions. Get your ass on the field and perform. And that's what the, that's what the NFL is all about. Stop mm -hmm. talking and perform. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because so. right, because right now, looking at Calvin Ridley so far this season, um, at the pace that he's going, if he doesn't really step it up um he has 281 receiving yards in five games mm. bless his heart <laughs> why <laughs> if he, if, bless his heart. but if he but if he doesn't if he doesn't improve like you said you looking at that five game stretch the way it looking right now this dude literally on pace to um have under 800 receiving yards Mm-hmm. If he goes at this same pace right now. And the thing about it is, you're not gonna get nothing for that. Nah. Now, especially if you're talking about somebody trying to trade somebody for as their number one receiver commodity. But because it, it's not because it, it's like it's not like okay, uh Calvin Ridley had has a potential to have another year under this offense to where he can okay, we say. Well, this might not be his year in this office, but maybe the next year he may flourish. He's already he's already on the last year. Yeah. Am so I right? This, or yeah, the, or, 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 this the last year. So yeah, this, so this is the fifth year extension. Option. They, uh, yeah, they exercise the fifth year option. So this is the last year. Mm. Okay. Okay. So yeah, well, so it's like I say, it's, it's gonna be real. it's gonna be interesting, but unless Calvin really th pull off about four games where he's catching catching for 150 plus yards, it's not looking yeah, good I mean, for him right now. I mean, the thing the thing is, we really I think um, they kind of give me some uh, hope. I mean, he's talented. He's he's very talented. He's the very best, one of the best route runners in the league, hands down. And that's not something just to, you know what I mean, just to sweep under, like, overlook. So it's, the talent is there. I, I wonder, I question if there's some. there's been some discussions with his agent or somebody that dropped it, you know, put a bug in there. Like, hey, they not, they're not going to sign you. Or, hey, they're looking to trade. Where it's something off the field that has made him where he's not selling out. Where he is, as somebody said, he's moonwalking. He's going backwards. He, he ain't looking for contact because, you know what? I ain't trying to get her to mess this money up. I might have a bad whatever, but I ain't finna risk it all for this team. That's that's what I that's what I speculate and kind of wonder. But obviously, you know, we don't have anything to base it off of. It's mere speculation. But I, I wonder just based on performance because you just don't. I mean, he got he got, he got real live talent, undeniable talent, mm -hmm. um, and he is the premier route receiver. And I'm sure trading Julio, they felt confident that, well, yeah, he's not physical freak like Julio. You know, I mean, they, they don't make too many like them anyway. But he, he's a damn good receiver. And he brings the, a lot to the table. The good thing about his contract, and I just looked at it, um, is that they exercise. So this is his fourth year. Uh, but mm. going into his fifth year, um, that's the year where the Falcons can, that's why I say it makes them that much more valuable, um, for the team, because now, um, they're going to have, they're going to be teams that look at him. It's like, okay, um, I can do something with him. Um, it's like the NBA with those one year contracts. Um, yeah. you know, he's on that yeah. last year of his contract. He either, you know, keep him 
trade him for a first, second round, third round pick, and see what you can do with that. Um, if he if he balls out, you 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 know you in fact you you are impressed in what he can give you with a team, then you give him that extension. Um, but I think yeah. again, I think this is the perfect opportunity for the Atlanta Falcons, not so much Calvin Ridley, um, because he's still in a position where he has to prove his worth. And and one thing that's not in his favor is that he's 28. He's going to be 28 years yeah. old this year. Yeah. So yeah. he he got one chance to really like he he cannot drop the ball this year. He has yeah, the sure. ball out from this point on. No more excuses. He got a ball out. And right yeah, now, he's he, not looking like that guy. Yeah, because he was one of the older wide receivers when he came mm-hmm. in. Too. So, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, like you said, he has one opportunity for one more contract. Yeah, one, one, big, one yeah. big contract. Yeah, he was he's 24 good. when he came in. Damn. So, yeah. Shit. Uncle really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he about to get that <laughs> um. He got two more oh, years really? before he hit that um yeah. stage in the NFL. Yeah, um boy. Status. yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah he, he OG status right now. He made over 25, mm-hmm. but he hit um status real soon. It's coming. Got to gotta scare that bag. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that that's one of, that's one of the main things. Like you said, the, the, the NFL, especially when you're looking at the NFL, they looking at them ages too now mm-hmm. because – yeah, and they're also looking at okay, he doesn't have that Julio on the other side of him. like like yeah. this is why when I originally said and yes I originally said that we don't like at the rate that he's going, it's looking like it might like uh, hopefully not. He's it could possibly go down that Juju Smith Schuster well, mm. and. That and like I said, you don't want that going down like that. Oh, no, nah, we don't want that. He's twenty-seven. He'll be twenty-seven in December. All right, he's twenty-six, but he in, in a month or so he'll be twenty-seven. Okay, okay, okay. So he, but that yeah. still doesn't make it any better. He came in the league. It really don't. They don't make any. So it really doesn't matter. A lot yeah. of these guys like Kyle Pitts are coming in at nineteen, like twenty years old. <laughs> 20 no. years old. He came in at 24. Yeah, because like I said, uh, he balls out. He balls out. He has an opportunity to get at least two two contracts. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, that's the main that's the main thing. Like you said, these franchises ain't really got no patience like that. And um, uh-uh. not for receivers. No. Uh, hold on. Here's a comment that I saw, and, and this was um slimy D man. He's like, "Why would they trade really after they traded Julio? This is a different offense. This ain't the same offense." You just said it. You literally just said it. It's not the same offense. This is not an offense that's predicated on the wide receivers being the predominant guys. Um, like you, you literally said, just said it with that same comment. You literally just said it. They traded Julio. He ain't Julio. So if they trade Julio, you really believe <laughs> that they won't trade Calvary, who's not Julio? Right. So I think I think this regime, though, one thing they've shown, even even though they did show Julio, they they they, uh, they need to win it, you know. So I don't think uh, Arthur Smith, Dean Pins, nobody on that staff is trying to punt this year. They definitely shown that they're playing to win. Um, even you could tell by them not even putting some of the young guys like Richard Grant and giving them the, the time that people have been wanting because, hey, they got more experienced veterans who are more so uh, likely to give them some, you know, better minutes out there in the field. But I, I don't think see them trading really. And if they do, I think that's a that's a sign that they may be punting. But I think if we was going to punt, we would have drafted Justin Fields or we did something like that. You know, they're not punting the season away. They're trying to win. Go ahead. <laughs> Woo time. Hold on, do it like I this. don't know how many times. I, I don't know how many times we I'm gonna have to just say this. Okay. Ain't nobody fucking saying that he has to be Julio. Okay. Let's just stop that. <laughs> We're not saying yeah. that he has to be Julio. Just catch the goddamn ball. 
He's dropping easy passes. He's running backwards. He's not doing his job as a number one receiver, not even a number two right now. So it's not even, it has nothing to do with Julio. We're not trying to compare him to Julio. We're not trying to compare him to damn Muhammad Sanu. He's not being the best receiver, period. Yeah. Okay? Not, that ain't not like this. This has nothing to do about comparing him to who or whatever. It's not what he did last year. This what? year, he's not even catching the damn ball. That's the problem. We yeah, can talk yeah. about all what you did in 1922 and 1930. None of that shit matters. It's about what you're doing right mm. now. Right now, Calvin Ridley is playing like absolute horseshit. Mm. Excuse me, okay? That's just mm. th This is what we're talking about. This is the same reason why I always hold my opinions and thoughts on quarterbacks and players because we always get so hyped over one season. Guys like Lamar Jackson put up the MVP numbers. He throw for 3,000 yards and rushed for 1,200 yards. And the next year, he barely throw on for 3,000 again. Stop crowning these guys great players before they actually show you what they are all about. We just we got three quarterbacks right now in the NFL that went one, two, three, and every last one of them suck like hell besides – Excuse me. And the first 15, all right, I'm just take that back because uh, Trevor Long is doing his thing. Not going to hate on him. But we got Trey Lance, we got Wilson, and we got um, Fields. They're playing like absolute horse shit right now. But they're, they're young quarterbacks. But the, the, the media and a lot of these analysts, these, a lot of these football players, label these guys great before they even had the opportunity to prove themselves. So it's all about proving yourself right now. Calvin really isn't proving himself as a receiver, period. That's where the focus is. We got to get what we can get out of it. And right now, and let's be honest, Kyle Pence ain't even a wide receiver. He ain't even learned how to run the proper routes yet, run NFL routes yet. And this dude is almost breaking NFL records. As a matter of fact, he just broke an NFL record. He ain't even learned the game yet. And he's doing that. So, got to get these guys time. Got to give them time. But at this point in time, when you're in your fourth year, fourth, okay? Yeah. Fourth. Mm -hmm. This is not one, two. This is not his first year. This is not his second year. This is kind of really fourth year. And if you're struggling in your fourth year, are you really that damn good? Let's just be honest. Let, let me ask you a question, Mike. So, check this out. So this is, you know, we as a fan base have a tendency to have a lot of uh, recency bias and stuff, whatever. Um, and as you stated, this is really his fourth year. But through his first three years, he showed a, a lot of promise in production. Do you let this season, even though it may not be the ideal, if it is a slump season or down year, do you let this overshadow what he did his first three years? Does this, does this season – make you think, like, oh, okay, well, really, it's washed, really, it's whatever. Uh, maybe we should move on from it. Or do you say, okay, well, we're going to believe in you. We're going to ride with you. You know, you got a down year. Everybody, everybody have, some people have bad days. Some people have a down year. <laughs> it happens. You know what I mean? Do do we let this overshadow his body of work for the first three years? Financially, absolutely. Okay. Financially, absolutely, you do. Okay. Because you can't financially, you can't. Can you, like, well, let's just make for instance, this is the exact same thing that we did under Thomas Dimitrov when you talk about, you know, crowning guys. We gave yeah. Robert yeah. Alford $40 million when he had one good year. We gave um, Devontae Freeman $42 million. You labeled him one of the best. Uh, <laughs> I knew that was going to get you. <laughs> <laughs> hey. I knew that would get you. So financially, yes, you do have to at some you have to say financially, OK, you had a down year this year. I don't know if I can give you one hundred and fifty million dollars because you did not. You know, you didn't you weren't consistent with your numbers. All right. Yeah. Granted that yeah. there's a you know, a granted that there is a learning curve for different coaches. But I, I can't as a GM, I can't take that risk. We did the same risk that we took on the Thomas Dimitrov. Mm. 
Okay. I mean, but, yeah, that's true. That's I remember Dimitri off. Yeah, he definitely uh he he's the reason we in this predicament now. But go ahead, Kay. But <clears throat> one of the main issues that I see with Calvin Ridley right now is and this is the and from what you were saying as far as like where's his status at? See, like you said, if he got one more year here. And then you know they were signing for that fifth year option. See, like I said, this, this throw this could be a throw in. Now, the previous years before that, he was the number two. So now people are gonna be looking at okay, is did his numbers dip this low because he didn't have mm-hmm. coverages rolling to him, or he didn't mm-hmm. have to worry about those responsibilities as what Julio had to deal with? Um, like I said, Cal, like Calvin, like, and we we going we gonna say this again, and, and I think I haven't said this yet. Calvin really is a damn good receiver. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the only issue is, is that this offense deals with different types of receivers that Calvin really is not. Uh huh. Because if you look at Tennessee, if you look at the Tennessee, if you look at the Tennessee wide receiver that Arthur Smith had. Like I said, Janu Smith is what he wants. AJ Brown is a big boy. Corey Davis, big boy. Uh-huh. These, these are these, these are guys that are used to catching the ball in traffic. These are guys uh-huh. they may not like like Corey Davis may not be the greatest receiver in the league or the best route runner, but you have to have a certain mentality in this offense. Uh-huh. That's why you're starting to see a little bit more of Tajay Sharp in his offense. He has rapport with Arthur Smith and knows what Arthur Smith wants. Uh-huh. Now, Tajay Sharp is not that good as far as him playing him like a lot. But but Tajay, but but when they needed those third down pickups or when they needed like to get to that third and short, Tajay Sharp is always the one catching them balls. Like I said, Cal- like I said, Calvin Ridley right now is he's trying to fi- he's trying to figure himself out as far as what his role is here because, like we said, being the number one wide receiver and being the number two is completely different. It's not even in it's not even in the skill set. It's in the mindset. In his and offense, he's not even in, he's in this offense in itself. The- Offense is predicated on the tight end. That's the reason why mm-hmm. it went out and got Kyle Pitts because it's predicated on getting the tight ends the ball. So that's why I said financially, you can't take that risk to say, especially when the offense is designed to get the ball, like um, to get the ball to guys like uh, Cordero Patterson, Mike Davis. Um, you even see, um, you know, Hayden Hurst and Lee Smith catching the ball before a lot of right. wide receivers catch it. So yeah. basically, financially. That's why I said financially and not skill set wise. Because when you talk about skill set, you put Calvin really on the Green Bay Packers, I guarantee he'll have 13, 14, 1400 yards. Because yeah. based on that yeah. offense, he's going to he gonna put up numbers. But in this offenses, in this offense, I cannot give Calvin really that money because guess what? Arthur Smith has shown us that he likes to spread the ball around. Right. It's not it's not predicated on trying to give 15 targets to uh, one guy every week. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's about feeding the hot hand. That's mm-hmm. why that's why before Kyle Pitts then went on this um, two game stretch with over 110 mm-hmm. yards. That's why you saw a lot of Cordero Patterson getting a lot of these passes, running these hook routes, run, like running these routes outside and and these these swing routes and stuff like that because it was about feeding a hot hand. And Nathan Nathan said, well, wasn't he a number one in Alabama? No. You got to remember, Alabama had Jerry Judy. Ruggs, Henry Ruggs. Now, I don't, was Ruggs there? Henry time? Ruggs was gone. I, 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 he might have no, been no, there. No, 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 no. I think he no. No, no, I, Ruggs, I, Ruggs I, wasn't there yet. Ruggs wasn't there yeah, yet. Wasn't they there had Devonta Smith. Yeah. They had Jared Judy. You had Najee Harris. 
OJ Howard. I think OJ Howard was before that. I think he might have been like he. I think OJ yeah. Howard came out the year before that. But the thing about it is. Alabama was surrounded with a lot of talent to where you couldn't focus on one guy. Uh -huh. See, like I said, right now, Calvin Ridley, I think he's kind of feeling more of the pressure of trying to live up to that Julio status. Like, oh, damn, I got to be the guy now. Instead of just being Calvin Ridley, just be yourself. Like you said, you may, like I said, your role may not necessarily be well on the outside. Like I said, in this type of offense, Calvin Ridley would damn sure be very, very beneficial in the slot in this offense. This is like I said, this, like like right like right now in this type of offense, he would be better suited as a slot. That doesn't mean he ain't good. Like I said, it's just certain roles and like certain routes that he specializes in in this offense. They don't run those on the outside like that. No, they run them in that slot inside. So, and you have to think about it. we, like I said, they he we pass the ball damn near 36 to 40 times a game right now. So, there's opportunities there. So, mm -hmm. like I said, it, it, I think it's just more so of Calvin Ridley. I think it's more so Calvin Ridley. I think he just feeling the press, uh, he might be feeling the pressure of trying to. To, to take that mantle from Julio, and like I said, it's not correlating on he the really field. Didn't have time to prepare for it, and that's why I say right. Julio Jones. You know, it's like this. This is, um, you know, the the negative of him being selfish in that position, um, because a lot of guys like Julio had time to take over the reins. You know, like he he, he was prepared for Roddy White not being here. He yeah. was prepared for, you know, Tony Gonzalez not being there. Like they, he he was slowly put into that position. Kyle really never had that time to like really just like, all right, I'm the guy now. All right, this year I got all the balls <clears throat> and I can go to the offseason, start working on being the leader, like knowing the offense. Like he didn't have any of that time. So that's why I was like, even now, I was like, look, yeah, he's he's not mm -hmm. performing well, but Julio put him in a position where he wasn't ready for that. And that's why I say as a teammate, this is the things that, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of players, you know, especially as a guy like Matt Ryan being a quarterback, um, like he's patient with a lot of guys because guess what? Like a lot of these guys, it takes time for them to get it. We seeing Richie Grant slowly. It's week eight, and he's slowly starting to get it. We slowly starting to see, you know, uh, a Jalen Hawkins starting to get it. These guys, it take time. So that's why I always say I, I'm I'm a little bit more lean um, as far as Calvin really is concerned. Is because you know he didn't have time to like put in because like I said, this is a whole new offense. Mm -hmm. He was not in the West Coast mm -hmm. offense at 16 with Julio. This this system right now with uh Arthur Smith is almost identical to what Kyle Shanahan run. He don't he's he doesn't know that offense. I got I gotta disagree with you on that one, Mike. I think <clears throat> you can't say he ain't got time. They say what they always say about time, you make time for what you want. He's a professional athlete in the National well, Football League. Let, let me say this real quick. Let me say this. Yeah. I, I, I I didn't want to really come out and say it. I just don't think he's as smart as other receivers. And like I said, I didn't want to have to, I didn't mm -hmm. want to say it like that. So you think he like don't some receivers the catch on faster than other guys? Like it takes it. Not everybody is an Ed Reed. Ed Reed, Troy Palomalo, you put those guys on the field, they get it just like that. And I don't think I, I'm not saying he's stupid. I like I'm not saying that, but some receivers and some people don't catch on. Not everybody is Tom Brady, who's cerebral. Not everybody is Peyton Manning, who's cerebral. Not everybody is Matt Ryan, who's cerebral. These guys, you can put them with any coach, any system, and they're going to pick that shit up like that. I don't think that's Calvin Ridley's strength. I think, I, yeah, think I, mean, what, I, th I think what Mike is more so saying is, like I said, it's the responsibility of that number one receiver. I think that's mm -hmm. really what it comes down to mm -hmm. because you have to think about it. 
when you're the number two receiver, well, when, when you're the number one receiver, what are the main things we saw from Julio? You got the coverage to your side. Yeah. The other guys look up to you to make that play. You got to get those first downs. You got you got to lead by example. You got to be the tone. Coach on the field. You got to be a coach on the field too. And what it is is Calvin Ridley, like like I said, and you also have to think about it. The Julio thing came out of nowhere, so it ain't like this was something that was prepared for. Him. Nobody knew Julio wanted out. It probably brewed in the background, though. It could have been something that's, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It, yeah, it may. I think it was behind it, the scenes. Well, but, like, yeah. as us as us Falcon fans, we should know this. There was one particular receiver that we had in our history that's kind of going down this same road right now. <laughs> um, I don't want to say his name, but I got to say it. Remember when Peerless Price got signed here in Atlanta? Everybody thought he was going to be mm-hmm. the number one. Uh-huh. I, I'm going to have to bring it up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, y'all. Y'all, 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 y'all can crack jokes on me. The people can crack jokes on me when I say Peerless Price. Price though. No, no, what it is is Peerless Price. Peerless Price was a number two in Buffalo because Eric Moles yeah. himself is a legendary type yeah. receiver to me. Now, what happened was in Buffalo, see, he had almost 1,300 yards in Buffalo. That's what prompted Atlanta to get him because they're looking at the numbers. They look at the numbers like, oh, shit, he could possibly be our number one down here. Now, Michael Vick's accuracy wasn't the greatest, but you can kind of tell Peerless Price trying to be that number one wasn't working because that's something that he wasn't used to. That's something mentally that he couldn't fathom um but at the end of the day like you said this is what calvin really is going down right now he's he he's he's trying to find he he's trying to he his mindset right now he's trying to fathom that number one responsibility because at the end of the day you are the tone setter and when these guys looking at you catching the ball you close to the first down line and you running backwards or you dropping the ball in, 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 in close vicinity, those are energy plays that they look for the leaders. That that's the number one receiver is the leader, is one of the leaders in the locker room. And like I said, it's just one of those cases where he's trying to figure it out. Maybe mentally, he just not not that's not his game. Like you could be a great, like I say, he's a great wire, like I say, he's a great route runner and everything. But these guys are looking for you to set a tone. They're looking for you to be that guy to be like, okay, I'm gonna do this. See, now we got we like I say we got happy because when Julio went down last year, Calvin really started pulling off those 100 yard games. It was 105, 115, such and such, back to back to back to back. But the issue that we look at is, by looking back at it, is they didn't take him as serious as far as being the number one target because everybody mm-hmm. thought, okay, without Julio, Matt Ryan ain't got nobody to throw to. And now who? Now Calvin Ridley is catching these passes, these deep flat routes, and getting these hundred yard games. So it's like, oh shit, oh, oh, we might potentially have a number one. Mm-hmm. So the so the teams didn't really look at Calvin Ridley and take him seriously. He was just mm-hmm. another cog in the machine. So with that though, with so that's one of the things that I thought about too when Mike was speaking that Julio was out. He had a share of absences and uh targets mm-hmm. or whatever like that. Um but um really did perform. He showed up but at the same time just like the offensive players, the defensive players earned their check too. And uh, though they they should, they have you know I mean and you know I think even though we didn't have anybody else, you know what I mean we didn't have anybody who was who else with him the game plan for then really so I think really showed that he's capable last last year I think this year is a different scheme and yeah he may not um, be the number one uh, receiver in the in the in the uh, in the pecking order this year 
But I think even with that, though, you draft the tight end at number four, he's not just a tight end. You see they use him out wide. They have him playing wide. Um, receiver, they got him playing, you know, different different splits and everything like that. So he's a weapon. So they drafted another a freak, another physical freak. He's not Julio. He's Kyle Pitts. But he's a 6'6", 240, physical freak. And he he's going to demand attention. And the more he continues to produce like he has, uh, the last few weeks, I think it's going to it's going to take away some pressure from Calvin Ridley. It's going to make um, I'm not saying all the defense is going to roll their coverages to Pitts and start game planning for him or trying to spy and double and bracket him and everything like that. But I mean, they may. But at the same time, I think Calvin showed that he's capable. Um, let, me, just, let me give you. A, let me give you. A, let, let, let me paint a picture for you. All right. Yeah. This this is the reason why it's completely different for him. All right, let's just take basketball, basketball analogy for you. You got a guy like Steph Curry. You got a guy like Steph Curry, and you got, you know, Klay Thompson next to him. Yeah. Is Steph Curry still Steph Curry? Of course he is. But when you yeah. got Clay Clay sitting on a wing on the exact same size, you got Steph at the top of the key, and you got Clay. Mm-hmm. That. That secondary, let's just say uh, that 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 guard, whoever's guarding uh, Clay, yeah. is this guy going to run towards stuff that like double stuff, or he's going to hesitate because, damn man, I can't go nowhere because, damn this Clay right here, and Clay can put up sixty in thirty seconds. You know what I'm saying? Like Clay yeah. can do that at any given time. Yeah, and that's kind of how teams are looking at it now. I got Julio. Julio isn't there right now. We know Kyle Pitts could potentially be there, but he isn't that yet. So yeah. right now, we, that safety, he's gone. He ha- he doesn't have to second guess. He doesn't have to play like he's not playing in the middle of the field. He's staying right. Like he's staying. He he's going when when a, when a, when a Kyle really goes deep. He's going. He doesn't have to hesitate. When you create that hesitation, like that that's when. Calvin really he eats. It's about the hesitation. But now, right now, we don't have it. Those safety is going straight at him, and you know a guy like uh, Calvin really he can take advantage of those. You know that hesitation until we get that guy. Until we realize what Cal Pitts really is, and that's why I feel as though it's like things are really going to change. You're going to start to see Cal uh, Calvin really get those passes. Is because now everybody sees what Kyle Pitts really is. We know that he's an animal right now. So that's why I say Mm -hmm. until we establish who the true number one in this offense, is it Calvin or is it Kyle? And right now it's looking like it's going to be Kyle Pitts. And and, and once we know that for certain, that's when we're going to see the real Calvin really because he doesn't know if he's the number one, and the offense doesn't know if he's the real number one. Mm. Okay. I think this. I think this week against the Panthers is going to be interesting mm-hmm. um, because you know it's another week for him to to come in and show uh, Calvin to come in and uh, I mean for the whole team, but especially Calvin, somebody up against this this contract here come in and produce and show that he is capable of being whatever he is, a starting wide receiver in the NFL mm-hmm. at this point, because that's what he's struggling to show, that he's, you know, he's not starting wide receiver material. He hasn't, he hasn't shown that this year so far. So hopefully, you know, he's healthy. He can come in and do his thing, and and all this will be just, you know, dished in memory or whatever you call it, it's history. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like you said, it's just all about the mindset at the end. At the end of the day, it's more mental than physical anyway. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's all it is. Yeah. Like you said, he got he got all the skills, but right now, the biggest skill that he's not really processing right now is the mentality behind it. Yeah. All right, what Denzel? That's for real. I almost said Denzel Curry. I was about to say, no, it's Denzel Curry. He said, who do you think going to guard Pitts? <laughs> Denzel Curry. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, they're going to try to throw everything out. They're going to throw everybody. Everybody. <laughs> everybody. It's going to yeah. take a visit. Linebackers, DB, like everybody. Like corners, you're going to see everybody on him. 
and that's why I say is is it's difficult for Cal really to kind of find his place with this team because you do have a guy like uh Kyle uh Kyle Pitts who's just everything. And again, in this offense right now, we don't know who that true number one is. As much as we like to say Calvin really is that guy, but Kyle Pitts is looking like an absolute monster. So from week to week, until Calvin really feel where he in his head, where he fits in in his offense, you know what I'm saying? It's like like I said, it's like playing with a Trey Young. Like, are you gonna be a, a three point shooter? You know, like 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 you know, like uh, Kevin H- uh, Huda, or uh, because because you got a guy like you know Trey Young who can not only shoot from the three point line, but he can drive, he can do, he can pass the ball, he can excellent yeah. pass, he can do all these different types of things. So what are you gonna do? Is Trey going? Is he gonna drive to the hole? Are you gonna dish it off? Or are he gonna like shoot? It's so many var- variables with a guy like Kyle Pitts because he can do yeah. it all. He can live. That's the dynamic that we have with this team. He can block. He's a tight end. He can line up outside. And then you got a guy like Kyle, Calvin Ridley. We know he is a, a he's a deep threat. But when you have a Kyle Pitts who's doing everything, you got a, a Cordero Patterson who can do everything. Where does Calvin Ridley fit? And I think that's the issue that is bothering him because we have so many dynamic weapons in, on this offense. Yeah. We ain't got position. We really don't have like like if you look at Kyle Pitts and Cordell Patterson, they're not position players. They no, they they're just football players right now. And that's the way that they're using. But uh, B Strong came here with the two dollar super chat. Yes, sir. Holla, holla, holla. He said, "Do you think Matt Pease would make a good DC?" Hey, as long as you learn it from your dad, as long as you learn it from your daddy. <laughs> You stay under your dad's shadow and learn everything you can. It's a possibility. I mean, yeah, you got a whole bunch of knowledge. We got to get some talent, though. We got to get some players on that yeah. side. If you spend some of that money, that's why I agree with Mike for it's not uh, necessarily putting that money on really, especially if he don't produce. And put that money on defense because defense is – we mm-hmm. definitely need some – we could use some quality players. We could use a couple of people like when the last time we had a defensive prospect, kind of like Cordell Patterson to come in and produce, like show up and be like, bring excitement, you know, um, Debo, yes. you know what I mean? Did, you know, uh, still do. I ain't, ain't going to knock him. Debo do, but we haven't had nobody that we bring in off a of free agency, some free agents that we brought in and just like, man, they can't really, really produce. That was a good free agent signing. Like, <laughs> I think if you're talking about yeah. free agent, yeah, it ain't really been too many. I mean, nah. you had, I think the last one, if you're talking about free agency, why? Abraham. <laughs> I wouldn't even go that far. I mean, Abraham definitely, but I wouldn't even go that far. I would say Don Terry Poe may have been the last one because him and Grady yeah. as a tandem yeah. was, was yeah. that was something special right there. Yeah, that was. That was the first, like, Grady had. Even the Super Bowl year, if you look at the Super Bowl year, I mean, I know this ain't free agency, but we're just looking at players in general. You had Jonathan Babineau. You had Dwight Freeney. You had Adrian Claiborne. You had Tyson Jackson. And like I said, the thing about these guys was these guys were big enough to where they took the pressure off of Grady. Because if Falcons would have won that Super Bowl, I think Grady would have won the MVP that that Super Bowl. We had like three and a half sacks. And that Super Bowl, that was almost I, wasn't that a Super Bowl record or was that tied for a Super Bowl record or something like that? It was tied. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, I understand what you're saying about that because yeah. John Abraham. I remember when John Abraham got yeah. signed. Oh yeah. But you're right, Poe. Poe po was definitely he was a big. Yeah, I forgot about Poe. Poe and yeah. Santi Samuel. Santi Samuel. Samuel was another yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, those two were definitely some. Uh, but I mean, we talking how many years? You know what I mean? <laughs> Well, much, John man. Abraham, boy, you going you going back damn exactly. near thirteen years for that shit. Exactly. You know <laughs> I mean? So, um, and even Poe with Dante Poe, that's the last big defensive tackle we've had. That was everybody worth it. Everybody else been slim thick. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> everybody else been light ass. You know, more man, more 
Man, more like bony as hell. That's what that was, boy. Hey, hell man, no. we, you know, they, they <laughs> battled 300 pounds. We converting defense ends to defense tackles. You know, like that's like he he was playing Madden. Dan Quinn was playing Madden over there. Like, oh, <laughs> this defense end, he's he's too But we would have but we'd have kept <laughs> Dan Quinn any longer, boy. We'd have had the first 225 pound defensive tackle, boy. I'm telling yeah, you. It was coming. It was coming. Oh, it was already, come on, bro. That man was yeah, already he, trying to make. Yeah. He was already trying to make John Kaminsky that defensive tackle next to Grady. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, Cardi Walker here said, would you rather have D-Led or Raheem Morris as your defense coordinator? Man, be quiet. Be quiet. Be quiet. <laughs> next, Cardi a fool, man. <laughs> he said D-Led. He said D-Led. Well, please. Pass. Boy, please, I wouldn't have D Led co- co- coach the defense on the goddamn Super Bowl puppy team. I, 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 I <laughs> fuck that. <laughs> Mr. Bowtie. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I said, a lot of people, <laughs> Bubble Gum said, no love for Paul Soli. I, uh, no. Nah, bro. Let me, hold, on, we, hold on, no, 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 no. Let, yeah. me, let me, let me, let me say this. I, I, cause I actually had, someone say this earlier like they they gave me a question um that earlier about tyson jackson solely uh, and saying those guys were horrible picks they were absolutely not horrible uh signers i mean um the reason why they didn't work out is because they couldn't make the damn mind up what the hell was the defense we don't know if they were trying to be a three four or four three you got rasheed Heyman, tyson jackson and Paul Solia as your pass rushers. And you thought you like that's what they was doing. So it wasn't that they were bad. Is that Mike Mike Smith and Mike uh whatever the other dude named Mike something? Richard Smith. Uh, Richard Smith. No, no, it was uh, Mike, 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 Mike. Mike, um, damn. What what he yeah. he was with the um the Mike Cowboys. Nolan. The, Mike, Mike Nolan. Nolan. My they couldn't. Man. They could. They couldn't make the damn mind up whether they're gonna be a three. Like I said, it was a rotation. It, it was Rasheed Hakeman, um, Tyson Jackson, and Paul Soli, and they had uh, Corey Beerman as the outside linebacker. I think he, yeah, he was the third. He was the he was the pass rush on that team. So they had Rasheed yeah. Hakeman. <laughs> no, no, oh no, I know what you're talking about. It wasn't the three, four, the four, three. I remember that defense that year. Mm-hmm. It was mm-hmm. it was a four, two, five nickel defense. That's what they were trying. <laughs> it was a four, so two, five was, nickel was, defense. I remember that. Yes. So they were and good like, players, but when you got dumb, you got a dumb scheme. Like it makes players look worse than what they actually are. So it wasn't that they were bad, man. They were actually good football players. <laughs> they were overpaid though. We paid them a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, money. They, yeah, that, yeah. I, I was looking that. at the, I was looking at the financial aspect. Yeah, okay, financial, okay, yeah. okay. That's yeah. that's yeah. what I was looking. Yeah, at. yeah, I agree there. I agree. Yeah, it it was the financial, yeah. but then it was also yeah. the coaches that didn't put them in the right. Because when Paul Soli, I was in Miami, they were he he was the nose tackle in the mm-hmm. three four defense, yeah. and then they brought him here. Then he ended up being. Being a defensive tackle in a four-two-five defense, bro, I was like, "Oh my goodness!" <laughs> yeah. yeah, they had an identity crisis. Yeah, but um, that's that's yeah, that, like I said, that shit was interesting because I was like, I was like, you got a lot of big ass defensive tackles. Why the <laughs> hell are we playing a nickel defense with three defensive tackles? Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, as hey man, I'm glad we're having this conversation though, because like get it from all uh viewpoints. Um uh, like I said, man. That, <laughs> oh wow. All right, bro. Hey, look, I'm oh say, man, hey. don't remind me about Corey Beerman being he that, said Corey yeah, Beerman was a nickel back. My oh. man playing so hey, like, hey, yeah. hey, I'm about to say update Braves are up one nothing, bottom of the third, base is loaded. All right, all right. Oh, sweet, okay. I think Duval, yeah, Duval is up. All you gotta do is just hit a sack fly. That's all we need. We need the sack fly mm-hmm. for that. But yeah, Croy Beer, mm-hmm. Croy Beerman was another one of those players where it was like, what is his role? Like he specialized in nothing, but he was out there trying to do his best. And he had I never pitches to somebody. It was blackmail. That's it. He had to have naked pictures. Somebody in the organization, some kind of 
<laughs> some kind of uh Illuminati sacrifice he witnessed, something had to go on. To, <laughs> I mean, he no he had no reason playing. I don't think he played anywhere after he left Atlanta. Like <laughs> no, a lot of them don't. A lot of them don't. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's one stop right. shop. All right. Hold on, here you go. We got a question here. Uh Kawabina Achina said, Who is the Falcons Mount Rushmore? I have Vic, Julio Ryan, and Jamal Anderson. Um that's tough. That, like I said, that's tough right there. Cause then like I said, you gotta you gotta still put Deion Sanders up. I mean, why why does Michael even Vic though he only plays like, like, why why is Vic on the Mount Rushmore because he he's the all time lead like he's not even the all time leading rusher like the only thing that he has is the all time like rushing for quarterbacks but like yeah like why did he deserve to be a Mount Rushmore? I said that like I said that's why I said that that's why I said with that one it's kind of tough because I can see why they say they they they're looking at Vic more so for shit nope that nope. yeah. Yeah, now, like I said, said, I would good. like I said, you like I said, too. yeah, no, 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 no. This is what I was gonna say. Like I said, um, because if you look at Matt Ryan, Matt Ryan got all the passing records. He's number one, so you have to put him up there. Julio got oh, all the receiver man. records. Um, like I said, Jamal Anderson is see his. That's the crazy thing about Jamal Anderson, though, because I. I got you. You leaving out Jesse Tuggle. That's the that's my issue. You you, you can't have a Mount Rushmore without Jesse Tuggle, bro. You yeah. you, you can't. Yeah. Or Deion Sanders. Yeah. That's why I say it was tough. So you, you can't leave those two out of there. Not the hammer. Brent Grimes. Hell, I put Brent Grimes before I put Vic on there. <laughs> <Shit. laughs> Optimus Grimes is balling hell. At least he produced. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's it's disrespectful to a lot of legends. Um, yeah, like that's what I'm saying. Andre, Andre Rising, as, yeah. as, as much as he had, like yeah. Andre Rising had a good career here in Atlanta, and just a good career. Chuck Smith, um, Terrence you know Matthews. Hey, like, hey, this Terrence dude right here. Yeah, yeah Terrence Matthews. Right <laughs> Terrence Matthews. You know what I'm saying? The same. That was said, Vic, Vic. Vic had a good run, but when you look at Vic, it's you looking at it was only a short period of time where you got the other guys who put in longer time. Like you said, Terrence Mathis right here. He put in time. Jesse Tubble put in time. Chuck yeah. Smith put in time. Yeah. Like, like. That's the only thing. That's the only thing. Mike Ken. How like Mike Ken is a Mike legend, Ken. bro. Come Mike on, bro. Ken. Bob Bob Whitfield. Whitfield. Those are great. Those are great tackles. Like Vic can like like I said, Vic had a four year run. Let's be real. Had a four year legendary run. If you want to talk about impact, maybe you can throw him on. Like maybe you um, can, even impact. You can say maybe. It was like like. There's just so many it's, players on this, on this, and it's like, like I said, Tommy Nobis is another guy who gives absolutely no love, no love. One of the greatest linebackers of all time, you know. What about like, what about what Claude about what Humphrey. about Scott Humphrey? Claude Humphrey, Scott another Humphrey. defensive Humphrey. end. Come on, yeah. bro, like, disrespectful to a lot of these to say Michael Vick. Like I said, it, it's too, it's too, it's too many guys right here. Scott Case was a hitter. And he led mm -hmm. the league. He had the record for mm -hmm. interceptions in a season. Mm -hmm. Rod so, Coleman. Rod that, Coleman was Rod, a great Jerry. Rod, yeah. Rod Coleman, Rod Coleman monster, boy. Yeah, boy, yeah. Before his knee injury, like, before his knee injury, that dude was putting up 10 sacks every year at defensive tackle. Uh, yeah, and he was undersized, too. Was undersized, crazy. right. Yeah. Jeff Van Note. Um, and Stone Decatur here says those blackout days, Hell, they had blackout. Hey, like you said, if yeah, you even yeah. when you're talking about those blackout days, you have to look at the other guys. You have to look at the other guys that put in the longer work. Like I said, Vic, Vic brought the excitement. Like I said, Vic yeah. was the new generation. He did, did like he is what he is. Um, 
he was what everybody in Atlanta wanted to see. He is what everybody aspired to be. Because if we think about it, a lot of the Falcon fans that are here now that says that were guys that really that guys that really didn't know about these past guys that did a lot of work. Like you said, the Jeff Van Notes, the Mike Kins, the Jesse Tuck. Like I said, I'm not I'm not putting Vic over Jesse Tuck. I don't give a fuck what uh, nobody say. Uh-uh. Hey, hell no. Nah. I would take Vic out there and put Jesse Tuggle in there. Because, bro, the hammer, nigga, your name is the hammer. The and son you of the hammer. All right. And, that man and got you, legendary jeans, bro. That man got <laughs> legendary jeans. Hell no. Nah. Everybody, like, everybody, a lot of people don't know he's the son of the hammer, all right? But that's the son of the hammer, Grady J, okay? Yeah. Because, yeah. like I said, Vic was prime time. But was prime time, and we talk about uh, Matt Ryan and the record that he has as far as his winning percentage and stuff like that. Is it really prime time when you've only been to the playoffs twice? Like well, it's prime. It, it, it's prime. It's prime time because it sells tickets. Yeah. See, yeah. we're we're it's looking at the selling tickets aspect of it. Mm-hmm. Cause let's be honest, when Vic was here, nobody really gave a shit about the Falcons. Man, man, let's, look, let's be honest. Let's just let's be honest. Look. You're talking about here selling tickets, man. Ja Rule out here still selling tickets. So do I need to? Hey, do I need to bring up the Greek, the Greek, the Greek food commercial again? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Come on, man. Selling tickets. That's the easiest thing you could do in the NFL is sell tickets. All, All right. you gotta do is sign a bunch of old people who used to be great. Well, I say this, right. I, you know what? You know what? I wait a minute. Now Vic was a different Vic brought he did bring excitement. Um, yeah, he bought it. Yeah, and, and then, I, I like think, I said, we. But it's not. We was easy all. To do we we all do. ate it up. We was all fans for it. Yeah, it's not easy. To do Absolutely. He Absolutely. He don't deserve to be on the Mount Rushmore, but he definitely. He brought. I think he brought so much energy and just excitement back to the city. It's kind of like reminiscent. I know it's not basketball, but kind of like Trey Young doing for the Hawks. Mm-hmm. Somebody yeah, young, yeah, fresh. And it's a different, it's a game that's so unique where, you know, you see somebody launching 30 foot threes, you know, Vic mm-hmm. back, get back there, take off running four three, you know what I mean? Out running DB, you know, doing things. So it was exciting. It was something to see. And, right. it, and it brought a lot of people. Um, he's That's why he has so many loyal fans and people that still remember that. They remember the highlights. They don't remember the lowlights. They don't remember them, them you know what I mean? <laughs> the yeah, none of that. You know, yeah, falling in the ball on the two yard line and it going out of bounds through the end zone. They don't remember they don't that type of stuff. No, they ain't never happened. That ain't happened. Fake news. <laughs> fake news. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man. But yeah, I think Vic definitely not my Rushmore. But he was see. definitely somebody. To, he put seats in. I mean, he put people in the seats. You know what I mean? He was somebody you pay to see. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like yeah, Matt Ryan. And I'm, I'm gonna use this analogy, and I know people are gonna hate it. But Matt Ryan is kind of like Mayweather. It ain't sex. Mayweather ain't had no sex in fights. You know what I mean? But he productive. Mm-hmm. That motherfucker win. He did, he did his thing. Right. Vic was yeah. like Tyson. Vic was yeah. putting. Yeah, you wanted to see the first round <laughs> knockout. Hey, look. The first look, round Vic knockout. Was, right. You know what I mean? It, was over. it might be over in 30 seconds. Yeah. But that shit was, you know, yeah. So, I, and I use that analogy. Granted, it's a little loose. I know Matt Ryan ain't Mayweather. But still, I'm just saying, like, for us, yeah. like, aesthetically. It was, you know, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it was bo- it was bored. They basically just say it was it, yeah, my, yeah. Matt Ryan Very is technical. bored. Very That's technical. basically yeah. what it comes down to. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Right. News he was, but like, but the, that's the same thing. Like, but like I said, the thing about it is sometimes yeah. the excitement can over can the excitement can mm-hmm. cover up for the deficiencies that the team really had. Mm-hmm. Cause the team was one dimensional though. That that's the one thing we don't really talk about is how one dimensional it is. Yes, we could say the receivers wasn't great, but if I remember correctly, I could remember the the guy that everybody says um everybody puts as the goat is Tom Brady. He didn't have the greatest receivers. 
Now, hell, Donovan mm-hmm. McNabb didn't have the greatest damn receivers. Uh-huh. But the thing about it was you saw the consistent production year to year. See, Michael Vick, when he was here in Atlanta, he peaked with Dan Reeves, and it went down. We're talking about we're talking about passing the ball here. It peaked down every year. Uh, like you said, on average, 54% completion percentage. Yeah. That was always one of the worst in the league as far as completion percentage because, like like we said, you can say he didn't have the big name receivers, but 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 did these receivers drop every pass that was thrown their way? Like I said, you had to know. You can't say the offensive line was garbage because they was number one in the league for rushing, but. Four out of the five years he was there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, they did that. Dan, yeah. hey, Dan the man. Dan the man said it perfectly. Dan the man said Vic was Deontay Wilder and Matt Ryan's Tyson Fury. Deontay Wilder <laughs> is a one trick. <laughs> hey, he got the hand of All the like that. Yeah. Hey, that, that he's going to put you to sleep. He ain't got number, no, nothing but a haymaker. He's going straight haymaker. Fury <laughs> guy, you know what I mean? It ain't sexy, but he just be nasty. He's gonna grab you. He's gonna grab you to them. He's gonna. That's all he's gonna do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Deontay Wilder has has that one right, and he's looking to throw that one right. He ain't got nothing else after that. And Tyson Fury ate that right up, boy. It was a wrap. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I always, I, I, not to get off subject, but every time I see Dante Wilder, I do Dante Wilder fight. I always laugh my ass off because it's the worst. It's it, it, like he's the worst boxer in the history. Of the, <laughs> to he's ever have the title, that dude is just straight up swing for swing for the fence. Ain't no technique in it whatsoever, man. Yeah, he's, man. <laughs> he hit he, he he knock your ass. He ba- he yeah. was basically he, he basically hit you on the he and basically came on slide. You got yeah. that hand and night quill, boy. He put him on the floor. Yeah. 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 be like this. Yeah. Slump. Slump. Yeah, he, yeah, he was ba- yeah, he was basically Kimbo Slice. That's how Kimbo mm-hmm. Slice was. Kimbo I'm Slice was a bad slump. motherfucker in them backyards. <laughs> they put that motherfucker in that octagon, boy. He couldn't whoop nobody's ass. <laughs> <laughs> Rest, rest yeah. easy, Kimbo. Rest easy. Rest easy, <laughs> bro. Hey, look, bro. I met Kimbo Slice at the airport, boy. His whole his entourage is scarier than that mother. Than his his <laughs> he, his entourage was bigger than him, and they all look yeah. the same. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh man. But yeah, but yeah. If you talking about that Mount Rushmore, yeah. That, like I said, you could say Vic made that impact, but Dion made a way bigger impact for Atlanta than Michael Vic did. I'm sorry. Yeah, that Dion. Uh, Dion, Dion was that dude, bro. And when we talk about just the franchise and who deserves to be on the uh, Mount Rushmore, you got to start with one person, um, and it's not going to be popular. But I don't think you can outlook because we're talking about longevity, impact, what he's done, not only with this franchise, but in the league. You got to start with my, uh, Matt Ryan first. Um, you like Again, he's not sexy. But when you talk about the impact and what, how many top ranked defenses, okay? How many top ranked defenses in his day, in his era, that he's taken down? He destroyed almost them all from Baltimore to San Francisco to Seattle to the even, you know, Minnesota. He's carved every last one of them, those defenses up. So he got to start. You got to start with him. And for me, you got to go to straight to Dion. I, I, I just like Dion just, oh my God, the dude played offense. He played special teams. He was a defensive back. Like the dude was everything. So it's it's my it's Matt Ryan Dion for me, and I gotta give Mike Ken um, his credit because when you talk about offensive linemen, that that dude was an absolute technician. He mm-hmm. like he was one of the few tackles 
in the history of the game to not really give up a lot of sacks. He never truly gave up sacks. That's how good he was. He was so good. He was boring as shit. It's like looking like you never hear his name. You never hear his name. He tell you all the time. If you go back and watch the interview on Atlanta Sports Unlimited, he goes and tell you all the records that he's like everything that he's accomplished. He was one of the first uh, tackles in the league. When you talk about, you know, to be able to run, I think dude was running like a full five. He was on like a four five back in, in in the eighties. That was unheard of. Him and Anthony Munoz were that damn good. Uh, you know what I'm saying? At, at Munoz, at Munoz, yeah, man. And uh, of course, that fourth one for me. I know it's probably the fifth one, but that fourth one, I don't see how you can disrespect the goat. And that's just a tuggle. The dude, he was so uh, he was undersized. Nobody wanted him, but when he got his chance, that dude lit the league on fire. Yeah. And I'm talking about he was not only a great run defender, but that dude was picking stuff off and he was taking stuff to the house <laughs> at his size. So those guys right there, man, I, like I don't think you – that fifth one is hard. That fifth one is hard. I, I think if you want to just give – um Tommy Nobis that just based on his credentials also you know compared to a lot of his his is 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 he's definitely got to be uh, he got to be considered one wow. over Julio I don't think Julio um the reason why I don't put Julio there is because um I can honestly say that Roddy White had more impact than Julio did. Check, I check his temperature, K Styles. Check his temperature. I mean, look at look at. Look, I mean, if you Roddy, actually if you actually look at if you actually look at as far as like Roddy scored like, a touchdown. Like, Roddy yeah, got an exactly. end zone now. Roddy oh, got in the end zone. He knew how to catch the ball in the end zone. He ain't drop oh, ball wide open. What time? Yeah, Late yeah. over in Georgia. What about nine, nine, something? You look, you right. tired. Y'all tired? Y'all all right? We need a break. Nah, man, look. See, see, here, see, here, see, oh. here's the, 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 the reason why you will put Julio on there because he got the, he has the receiver record. Like I said, he's putting, the, he put the receiver numbers up. See, the reason why Mike is saying I don't know about Julio is because if you look at all time as far as receiver scoring touchdowns, he's damn he's near in the one bottom one. 100 of all time. Uh -huh. That's the that's the only thing that people is gonna look at now. When you look at Roddy White, when you look at red zone efficiency with him, he scores touchdowns. Even when he had the one bad year with Vic, right? Like I said Julio, Julio is a is, is he he yeah. he 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 is um he's a physical he he's. He's he's fuck, he's fucking Poseidon in cleats. That's what his ass. Is. <laughs> he's a he's god in cleats. Right, right. He's a god, man. Julio's right, a man. god. When you talk about his skill set, he's a god, bro. But the problem is, is who like when you watch Julio, he's only had one season when he's caught double digit touchdowns, even with oh. the yardage that he had, and that and yeah. like I said, that is like I said, that is tough. Ooh. And like I said, man, but it, it, it's tough, man. But y'all like got to do y'all got to do an unpopular opinion alert when y'all start. Uh, <laughs> like that, man, because, uh, yeah. I mean, Shit. like Ronnie right got ten thousand. Look, I think he got like ten thousand yards, and like like I said, he still hold the record for TDs. Right. Yeah, hey, which is that's saying something. Roddy was no slouch. Now, I ain't just yeah, Roddy, I, Roddy is definitely yeah. A, I mean, See, a legendary Falcon NFL receiver, you know what I mean? But definitely in the Falcon history, he's as, as, the second as best receiver. Out there. Yeah, you're right about that. That's an unpopular, yeah, unpopular, unpopular right opinion there. because Julio, when you say impact, Julio, like, Julio, impact game, who, who, I, Julio who, impacted defenses. People, hey, yep. they, they came to the game knowing, all right, yeah, we gotta, I don't care what we do, we gotta, right. we gotta know what number 11 at all times. All time, right. mm -hmm. um, right at white. I mean, he he was he did his thing, but he wasn't. I think when it comes to impact, overall impact, Julio had he was way more dynamic, but he also brought more impact because he affected the game plan. 
Not saying people didn't have a game plan for Roddy, but not like they did for Julio. Julio stretch <laughs> defenses. Julio major, you want to play too deep. You have to go bracket. You know what I mean? You didn't really have to bracket Roddy as much. Roddy was he was more quick than fast. He was fast, but it wasn't like Julio fast. You know what I mean? It's different levels to it. So go ahead. See, see, Rod, Roddy was more of a possession receiver. Yeah. That 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 that's where that's that now I see I see where you're coming from with that. Yeah. See, Roddy was more of the possession type. Like I said, he wasn't the big game breaker like that. But like I said, at the same time, even though he only has three more touchdowns than Julio, he done caught some big game winning touchdowns too for this team. Mm -hmm. Well, that you got you have to kind of look at that as well. Mm -hmm. See now, Julio. Let, let's be honest with Julio. Julio's get Julio's too goddamn big to be running the way he is. That's why he can't yeah. be. Right. <laughs> hey. That's why. That's yeah. why he. That's why he kept getting them nagging injuries because he too damn big to be running like he do. <laughs> so that that was that was said. Like if you talking about Julio and Roddy, like say the yardage and like, kind of like the deep play ability it would be Julio. But if you actually look at their impact side to side, it's a mm -hmm. lot closer than you think. Like I said, it really is. They really it's a are. lot closer. Like you can't go wrong either way. Right. If but, you had to build a team today and you had those two receivers on and you're drafting on the board and they're in their prime, they're in their prime, they're rookie. Come into the league and you say, all right. It's your first pick. Are oh, you gonna pick? We got to pick a wide receiver. Who are we picking? Brand new league. We picking right away. We picking Julio Jones. Personally, me, I'm picking Roddy because I need attitude. I need that attitude. I need that shit talker. I need somebody who's gonna, <laughs> gonna slap your mama. Hey, Roddy talking whole like, That's shit. I want my team to be. That's why I say I want my team to be tough. I want my team. I want my <laughs> team. I'm I'm talking about just my how I'm building the team. But if you're talking about just skill set, you're gonna pick Julio all day just based on overall skill set. But when, when I'm talking, talking about, don't equate the to toughness. Look at Rex Ryan. I, it don't damn matter. The reason why it don't matter is because when you got them big ass halls in front of them, and they, and they whipping your ass, and then you got a Julio. Oh, we got Roddy White laughing at you. Oh, you having a hard day, huh? Like that type of shit. Hey. That right there, that trolling, <laughs> that, that trolling when you getting your ass whooped and you looking at Roddy, he's just laughing at you. Come hey, on, bro. Come Julio, on, bro. Julio right. like Come Jesus. On. Julio like Jesus. He never said a mumbling word, but that motherfucker produced. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, he produced? Like hey, I said, I need some shit talking. Hey, I need, hey, a, I need a Dennis Rodman on my team. Oh, I need a Dennis crazy. Rodman on my team who's going to talk like oh. he's going he gonna to kick you in the nuts. He's going to talk oh. about your mama. He's going to do all that type of stuff. That's why I'm picking Roddy. I'm talking yeah. about the intangibles. Yeah. Yeah, Mike smoking his eyes out. You're right, Cardi. Yeah, Mike, I, I always ask him, is it dope dog? He look. Dope he ain't dog never had the, he ain't never had to cover uh Roddy White. So he 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 go off. He ain't even a he ain't even a Falcon fan. I ain't, he ain't even a Falcon fan. <laughs> <laughs> there y'all, there, there y'all go, goddamn it. it was <laughs> oh, but when you but like I said, when you actually look at both of those receivers, you can't uh, go wrong, bro. You can't. You, uh, you can't you can't go wrong with you. Like I said, there are two different styles of receivers. You can't go wrong. Um, but that question right there, damn, that's tough. Because yeah. we gotta look let, cause, cause we gotta cause we gotta look at the circumstances of both of them. Roddy was not projected to be the number one receiver on this team when he came here. Julio was. Well, Ooh. Julio was eventually position to be the number one receiver mm -hmm. so who was projected who was projected to be number one right was here it wasn't him so remember remember everybody wanted him out of atlanta that first year mm -hmm. yeah it was, was, it was uh, actually going to get rid of him because he couldn't they had mike jenkins right. you gotta remember mike i believe mike jenkins was it was um, still out it, it was still out of the time and mike jenkins he came here to aid Roddy, actually to kind of be his replacement, but Roddy kind of pick up um, that 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 the first year when Matt got here, uh, Roddy kind of picked up his uh, picked up his play, 
And um, yeah, Mike, Mike, Mike Jenkins Daniel. was. Yeah, he was drafted that same year. No, yeah. Mike he Jenkins was drafted. In, he was drafted in 04. So Roddy he was, was there with Roddy. Yeah, yeah. Roddy, Roddy, Roddy was drafted Roddy the Daniel. year after. Roddy was the year after. Uh, either way, I know. Uh, I know one of the things Roddy even talked about when on record that things that changed his uh the trajectory of his career. He got surgery. He got LASIK surgery. And is that you know before that it, he he had vision. I guess they've seen some of his vision. They say one off season. I think the off season before they drafted Matt actually. Um. Oh, yeah. The off season before he went and got his vision corrected. He got LASIK surgery. And uh-huh. shit, yeah, he turned into an even balling ever since. Uh-huh. Um, Mike Jenkins, I don't know. I think, I think they both had a, a challenge in offense because that offense wasn't really a, a, a vertical. It wasn't even a passing offense. It was, it was more run and, and give it to the tight end. Alger, like you said, Alger Crumpler was the number mm-hmm. one receiver, mm-hmm. or the one number one, um, well, receiver and target really. So. You know, they was kind of secondary players, but that, I mean, I think that speaks to the, the also the the talent of that speaks to Matt Ryan. People always like to say that oh, Matt Ryan always had this, he always had that, but I, look at him now. You know, what I mean, he's still producing with hey, he making chicken what chicken noodle soup with chicken <laughs> shit. You know, what I mean? right. so you know, I mean, granted, yeah, we got Kyle Pitts, but you know. How many top five picks don't produce? You know, it's not a given. Everything's not a given. So, um, and really, the best receiver on the team isn't producing up to up to par for his for his talent level. So, mm-hmm. but I'm not gonna get on my Matt Ryan soapbox. I let Mike have y'all. <laughs> hey, 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 but like you said, if you said between Julio and Roddy, yeah. <sighs> Just for the dynamic aspect of it, I'll probably have to go with Julio. Just for the dynamic? Just for the dynamic aspect of that. Like, like that's why I say he is he is he is Poseidon, he is Zeus and fucking Cleese. Yeah. Thor, he all of them, yeah. He, he like 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 he like um Julio is pretty much he's kind of like perfect what? receiver, man. Julio, he's the perfect we're receiver. About model of we talking about a model receiver. Yeah, he's like To. Those guys are just perfection. They wow. physical. They fast. They know how to run routes. Like you can't go wrong with Julio. Yeah. But like and I said, running through people, and he can run through people. And yeah. like that's something that Roddy. <laughs> did. I'm not saying Roddy didn't do it, but he didn't do it like Julio. And like I said, the only reason why I say Roddy is because I need an asshole on my team. I need a troll. On my team. <laughs> That's it. I need a troll. I need somebody who's gonna be instigating shit. And Roddy, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Julio was kind of like the quiet assassin. That, that's what Julio. Yeah, he, that's he's the, the quiet he's assassin. Jerry Rice. He's like, Jerry Rice. He's Jerry Rice. Yeah. That's what he is. He ain't gonna say nothing. He's just gonna let his play fit. Yeah. Right. 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 Rod, like Rod, Roddy. Roddy was basically kind of like Shannon Sharp in a way. Julio was like, Damn. that's perfect. <laughs> that's perfect. <laughs> Shannon Sharp used to agitate the hell out of Falcons. Oh my God. He saw so much stuff doing that Super Bowl. Boy, he was talking Boy. so much. <laughs> But yeah. the thing about it, see, but the thing about it is too, is that intangible of being that guy that talks shit like that mm-hmm. lifts teams as well. Mm-hmm. Like I said, Julio is quiet. Roddy is loud as hell. <laughs> Julio is a, is a better athlete than Roddy. Mm-hmm. They yeah. both give you the same thing. But like I said, ATM five three four. He said, "What is your all time Falcons offense? Two quarterbacks, two wide receivers, two tight ends, and two running backs." That's easy. Two running yeah. backs: Jamal Anderson, and for me, TJ Duggan. TJ Duggan is one of the most underrated uh, running backs. That dude was a touchdown <laughs> machine. Hey. Bro. Did you get touchdown hey. machine? You oh, can't stop oh, that talk, big ass. No, no, you talk. Hey, 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 you talk you talking about when you used to do that spike in the end zone? Yo. <laughs> <laughs> and DJ Duggan was so, before his knee injury, 
that dude was dead. Like, he was like Mike Allstock. You just hand on the ball, and he running over dudes. So I got to say Jamal and uh, TJ Duggan is uh, the two tight ends, obviously, is is Tony and, and Algie. Algernon, Darius Crumpler. Um, yeah. uh, those guys are just it. And um, quarterback, I, I just like, come on. It's it's only two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's only yeah. two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You try to take your guess for that part. <laughs> I'll tell you this. Wide receivers. Wide receivers? Oh, man. Um, it's too many of them. Man. It's, it's, it's too many because I, I want to give Andre Rodgers some. I want to give Andre Rodgers some love because he was a problem yeah. in the eighties, bro. Uh, yeah. Eighties and nineties, Andre Rodgers was a problem. Um, but again, when you talk about like, it depends on what you want at wide receiver. If you're just looking for sheer production, I'm taking Julio Jones and Terrence Mathis. Like Terrence Mathis mm. is one of the most underrated receivers of all time, bro. You look at his numbers, just go look at his numbers itself and and, and let that like like he he was a small receiver. He was like 5'10 and uh yeah. like 200, barely 200 pounds. I think he and like dude got like 800 catches. I think he got like 700, 800 catches or something like that. And he was the all-time leading receiver before Roddy got here. And he was there for a long time. So it's like, and he was catching a lot of touchdowns. That like Terrence Mathis was a route running magician. It wasn't a route he could not run. He was he was in a slot, he was outside, he was everywhere. So I say Julio, um I, I gotta say Julio and Terrence. Mm. Well, I think. You want to go K Styles? You want me to go? I'm gonna let I'm gonna let you go here, man. I'm gonna let you go. I'm, here. All right, I'm gonna say quarterbacks, like you say, Mike. It's easy money. You know, <laughs> Matt Ryan and Matt Ryan. No, I'm messing with you. Um, <laughs> Dylan, 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 Dylan. Um, <laughs> oh, well, definitely Matt Ryan is very easy. Wide receivers, you know, was Quintarius. What is it? Lopez, Lopez Jones. You know Jones. what I mean? Hey, Julio, and uh, I'm going to go rising, Andre rising. Um, running backs, that, that is the more, I think, one of the most challenging ones. But mm -hmm. for me, it's Michael Brown, the Turner, all day. And, I mean, we can't just, I mean, I still say Freeman. Before the knee injury, Freeman. Oh, no. Oh. Hey, look. <laughs> before the knee injury. Now, you remember, <laughs> Freeman was, I mean, <laughs> I mean, he was shaking dudes in the hole. I mean, he was, like, coming out of college, one of the biggest telltale factors about a running back going into the league is their ability to make the first person miss. Whether it's in mm -hmm. traffic, whether it's in open space, their ability. You look at all the great running backs. They all have the same trait, ability, not trait, ability to make the first person miss. That is a prerequisite. Freeman was, I mean, he made the first, second, third. He made the whole damn team miss, you know what I mean? Uh, but... I mean, yeah, I know Jamal Anderson is, is a legend, but for me, my um, if I gotta go, I'm from picking somebody. It's Michael Turner. And it's gonna be Freeman because they give you something different mm -hmm. and they they bring it. Oh man, yeah, that's a oh tight ends, yeah, tight ends, and it's and that's another one, Gonzalez and Algie Crumpler. You know what I mean? So easy money. That's tough. That, that like I said, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty much it, this list is pretty actually simple because, like I said, the two running backs, like I said, I go, like I said, I gotta go with, um, I gotta go with Michael Turner and Jamal Anderson, bro. Because, like I said, even though Jamal Anderson might not have been as versatile, might not have been as versatile as Devonte Freeman, it was, it was the attitude that he brought. Uh -huh. Like Devonte Freeman brought attitude too, but yeah, half the time, his, half the time his attitude led to his ass getting concussions. <laughs> right. <laughs> that was my only issue with it because he yeah. like he did two things. Devontae Freeman did two things. He either jump cut too much or he got the little man syndrome where he trying to run everybody's asses over. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You're gonna feel but, it. You're gonna feel that five seven one eighty five. <laughs> You don't feel that five seven right. one eight five. Hell, he hell he feeling that one five seven one eight five. His damn self. But yeah, I got I gotta go with with the burner. 
I gotta yeah. go with um I gotta go with Jamal Anderson, man. Yeah. Um tight ends is obvious. Um yeah. <laughs> Algie Crumpler, Tony Gonzalez. Lord have mercy. I remember Madden 05. It was always every year. Oh, it was like, uh, that yeah. first year, Madden 05. It was those two always free agents, and you had to pick one of the two. But besides the point, um, two quarterbacks we already know, um, Matt Ryan and Vic. Um, and what was the other one? The wide receivers. Yeah. That That's the hardest part for me. Yeah. Because Ter, 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 Terrence Mathis, like I said, you know, like I said, I love I love Roddy for what he brings. But Terrence Math, like I said, I have to do Julio and Terrence, man. I gotta do Julio yeah. and Terrence. Yeah. <sighs> Boy. People don't realize. Can I add, can, 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 hey, hey, can I add an honorable mention to this too? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> You I'm throwing the fullback position in here because oh y'all my God. Throw no love to the fullback position. I'm gonna throw the fullback <laughs> position in this thing. Bob Christian. That's all I need to say right now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't show Bob yeah. Christian some love. That was a nasty got, dude, man. But but like I said, Patrick DeMarco was up there though. He up there uh -huh. too. Nah, he ain't fucking with Bob Christian though. Patrick DeMarco. He ain't up there with Bob Christian. I'm just yeah, saying Bob as far Christian, as I'm, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm just talking about as far as honorable mention fullback. Yeah, Patrick DeMarco. Now Bob Christian was laying laying the no, you know what? You know, no, 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 you know what? Nope. I'm taking I'm taking Patrick DeMarco out. Ovi Mahalo. Ooh. Yeah, oh, oh. Ovi Mahalo. Man, we did an interview. <laughs> Ovi. Man, we did an interview. <laughs> Ovi. <laughs> That was yeah, so I fun. like I, talking about him smashing folks. I like I like I like I like Patrick DeMarco, but um now nah, Ovi Mahaley was a whole nother monster, bro. I had to put Bob Christian up there and I had to put Ovi Mahaley up there. Man, you seen his head Ovi Mahaley <laughs> head, boy. Boy, that <laughs> man got a broken out here for real, boy. That boy, <laughs> that, mo <laughs> that motherfucker got a flat head screwdriver head, boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Man. Don't tell him I said that, cause he gonna come over here and damn pancake up. shit out of me. I'm gonna hold my own, though. Oh man! Yeah, you gonna do? <laughs> hey, he gonna put you through that Oklahoma drill? Hey, 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 hey! I'm gonna hold my own. Don't worry about that. Hold on. Yeah, I hear you. I'm gonna hold my own. At least try to. I mean, that's Ovi. That's a different story. But yeah, uh, Flint, I said, who was that deaf dude we had at fullback? Oh, you're talking about Derek Coleman? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. That Derek Coleman, I can't really put him up there because he really didn't have no impact as a yeah, game man. Yeah. Anyway. yeah, they badly used him. Until yeah. They, until the NFC Championship game, they decided one of the, or whatever the hell that was. And the back Keith of the Smith had a – Keith Smith had a bigger impact at fullback than Derek Derek Cole. I, I just gotta be honest. Yeah, I can dang so say that. <laughs> but um, you all go ahead and get to the other uh, other topic we want to talk about tonight. The um, oh. the, the, the 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 um, oh, the God. baseball related the baseball related topic we had. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, I can't believe I'm actually even talking about this because this is absolute horse crap. Um <laughs> That's offensive, sir. Peter, and they probably and they, they probably gonna hit us up. <laughs> very offensive to the horse. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, Peter apparently wants the major league uh, the MLB to change the name bullpen because they feel as though it is offensive to cows. Uh, K Styles. Uh, <laughs> Um, hey, y'all got any thoughts on this? I oh hold my on, god, hold, Jesus hold, hold on. I'm I'm gonna have to take my glasses off of this. Uh oh. 
What uh, in the in, what in the entire fuck is going on <laughs> with this society right now? Offensive to cows. Um, let me ask you, Peter, you motherfuckers. I need to ask y'all a question here. Where was this energy for these motherfuckers that's poaching these ranches for these exotic animals? Where was y'all when these motherfuckers is sitting around here catching these animals for sport and hanging them on walls? You wear lipstick. That's offensive to whales. How the hell you gonna wear lipstick? How the hell the female Peter members sit around here wearing lipstick? It is coming from whale fat. Mm. I'm so mm. si- I'm so sick of everybody trying to cancel everything now, man. Like, like I said, and Dave Chappelle said it right. This entire media circus ain't nothing but a bunch of sensitive ass bitches. That's basically what it come down to. Everybody wants to cancel everything. Everybody don't want to be offended. Everybody, everybody is offended on everything. Well, it's going to get to the point now where folks ain't even going to even talk to each other. We all just going to be sitting at home looking at the walls like this. Uh-huh. Yeah, quite honestly, it's a distraction. You know what yeah. I mean? It's, yeah. That's what this is. It's, yeah. it's, it's an yeah. old school. It's a distraction. You know yeah. what I mean? They're just trying to, you know, have some talk about another narrative. Somebody, you know what I mean? Just a marketing ploy. I don't really think nobody should really take it too serious. I hope the MLB don't even entertain it. You know, the uh, <laughs> entertain the bullpen is offensive to cows. Like you said, people wearing lipstick, people got leather jackets, pants, car seats, everything. You know what I mean? Hey, they still got a Big Mac popping. You know what I mean? Whopper Junior's by the pound. You know what I'm saying? Hey, <laughs> hey, look, they still pushing out these beef products. You know what I mean? Collagen. You know, these got these, mm-hmm. these old women out here, or not even just old, just people in general using college and coming from the bones of the beef. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's all about, it ain't even, uh, it's whatever. It's just a distraction. Man, y'all stay woke, stay above the nonsense, man. And uh, when they start coming with fuckery like that, man, that's when you keep, you know, put your head down, stay on your grind, and you just keep your, you know, what Pac say, keep your legs closed, heads up, and eyes open. Mm-hmm. Oh, my cold yeah. eyes open. My bad. Wrong. I fucked it up. But you know where I'm going. Yeah, we know where. Hey, I'm about. Yeah, because I'm about. Yeah, I had to put the glasses back on because um, yeah. I almost, almost, almost went into um negative uh K styles. Mm-hmm. I was gonna throw mm-hmm. some shit. But no, nah, don't do it. Let me, let me. Hold on. Let me. Usa. <laughs> No, that, uh, that noise, that noise is offensive to the Indians, sir, to the natives. <laughs> Come on, well, bro. God, well, well, that well. Nah, I can't say goddamn because that's offended the, the damn religious people. Yeah, man. <laughs> can't say bullshit either. That's can't say bullshit because that's offensive to bulls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's gonna get this to the point, matter. bro. bro it's gonna... <laughs> hey, you you know you know what I find interesting. Why won't be surprised that they're gonna come after the NFL next? Pigs, yeah. Exactly. They they gonna yeah. they gonna want to, but it's like, dude, like, like, really, like, 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 really. We they, they, this is where it come down to. And y'all wait till the Braves are in the World Series to come out with this shit. <laughs> y'all, y'all, bruh, bruh. They came out with the um native uh, the, the the Native American Agricultural yeah. Society thing with it, which is yeah. a whole bunch of horse shit because they these motherfuckers ain't protested about Thanksgiving. They ain't protested about Thanksgiving. You wait till the Braves get to the World Series before y'all start coming up with some shit. Hey man, they still hey <laughs> it's funny. Um Animals get more attention and more uh, more mm-hmm. nonsense than humans. You know, what I mean, human rights. You know, um, 
uh, black people still we still trying to progress and, and overcome certain barriers for how many years now <clears throat> and nobody care about our feelings or, or whether we've been uh rehabilitated for whatever trauma our ancestors you know what i mean may have been uh exposed to but when it comes to an animal that um and nobody spoke or talked to this animal but they could speak to it but animal ain't spoken to the now not now one of the people that, that's playing in the sand something Man, you know that it's expensive. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Nobody said no, if the cow spoke to them, they all need to be, hey man. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. And I wouldn't hey, be hey. surprised. I wouldn't, ahead, I wouldn't, man. but 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 the but 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 I guarantee you these Peter folks that got all these damn worries, I bet you they support bestiality. They ain't said nothing oh. about that. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, uh, no. It's, it's, I'm ooh, I, ooh, I, ooh. <laughs> Wow, that man really. <laughs> that man oh, oh, I can, oh, I can go there. Wow. Yeah. They ain't yeah. talking about these folk. They ain't talking about these folk that got bestiality problems. I don't, that, I don't know what kind of people you hang around, K style. Oh, I don't know. No, 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 no. But but you need but you you really you need to look surprised. at. You really need to look at the news, and you gonna find a whole lot of stuff. I'm good, man. I'm good. I don't want to see that. Yeah, <laughs> I, don't see that. I pass. I pass. I don't even watch. Oh, you ain't hear about you, you ain't hear about that story about that one. Nah, you know what? Yeah, you ain't hear about that story about that one guy that got arrested. But um, I think he said he he sexually molested his dog or some shit like that. Uh, it, it's some weird stuff out here that's going on. Hey, like, bro, like, bro. bro, this stuff is weak. Like, dude, like, y'all not going after. You're going after bullpen, which has been a baseball term since the 1800s. It's words. How the hell are you going to take words, bro? What is wrong with y'all people? <laughs> it's in kindergarten, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will what? Never hurt. Me. Words will never hurt. Well, you Who know what? No, that, that's very that's very offensive because stones is very offensive to the earth. That's that's very offensive. <laughs> you're, right, you're, right. you're right. Oh man. I don't know, man. Uh, I think I, I think know. these I think these folks talk about I need to stop. I I I need to just stop watching. Hey, I told people. y'all you don't want to know what goes on and our heads and what we be talking about out there. All right, dude, so. bro. Bro, think think about it like this. <laughs> the LG like, like, and I'm just gonna throw this right here. Like we got we we have like this big up war with the LGP and Dave Chappelle. While all this is going on, they're trying to make pedophilia a sexual orientation now. So Ooh. add a P to that. Yeah, they we how they, they, how they saying that she was born like that. They was born like that, so I'm like, free R. Kelly, man. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah. I, you know, I, that's great. I don't know, man. That's that's uh, yeah, man. I don't even uh, no comment, man. Yeah, yeah, man, well, yeah like, I, like, I'm, I'm about to end this. We, I, we about to go into a whole nother. Yeah, we we're gonna invite some people on or something. Let's invite some people on to talk about something. Yeah, you, we, yeah, we we can do it. We can do it for like maybe fifteen minutes or something like that. About 15, oh, damn, it's been two hours. Yeah, yeah, about fifteen twenty minutes. We probably do that. But yeah, 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 yeah. But like, like, like when we start looking at when you start um the 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 reason why is when you start looking at all these outrages and everything, everybody being so offended and everything. There's always some underlining stuff going on that nobody mentions or talks about. That's the stuff that I look for. So when everybody start throwing all this stuff about PETA and LGP and Dave Chappelle, I'm looking underneath it and see what are y'all trying to damn hide. Oh yeah, God! You know, hey, oh, here we go. Hey, 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 hey. we gotta get. Hey, hey it'll be for 15 right. minutes. So try to keep it as short as you possibly can. Is exactly. that? Hey, look, hey, hey, Mike, here you go. I knew this question was coming today. I had a feeling this question was coming. Mike, look, look at the question. Oh, my God. <laughs> I knew this question was coming. Uh, No. 
<laughs> no. I mean, why? <laughs> we, we, why? You know we what's crazy get... though? We spent we spent a lot of time talking about really. A lot of time talking about really. We ain't dressed the, the ele- elephant or the running back that in the room, Mike Davis. And I mean, is it really an elephant? Is it what? Is it really okay, an elephant? Really, really is it okay? If really is an elephant, then damn Mike Davis is he another animal? Some he's some in he in the jungle though. <laughs> he in the safari. Hey, babe, yeah, yeah, babe, basically he's saying Mike Davis ain't living up to the um no. talk the, the he ain't living up to it right now. Like I said, the thing the thing with Mike Davis is not, and, and I've kind of noticed in his game the last few weeks is he more he see because he we gave him the reputation of him running people over. He looks for more contact than he does making plays, and I could tell by the way he runs, he's looking for contact. I mean, we gave him yeah. four million dollars, so I don't even he know why people wrong. expect. I, I mean, it ain't like we gave him fifteen, twenty million dollars. We literally gave him about what I think, yeah, about four, five million dollars or something like that. So it was like it right. wasn't even that much. So I right. agree, but you, you got to think now. You can't say that ain't much because that's more than what we uh, have to spare. You got to be up against <laughs> that cap counter. You know, what I mean, we kind of tight in the pocket right now. I mean, at, at, at the same time, but still, like we could we could have kept Tar Girl for less than that. And do what with him? The same shit that he doing right now. Not a damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So in that case, I mean, yeah, so that's what I'm like. That's, that's what I'm like. Yeah. Okay, like he, we didn't. At the end of the day, man. Um, I really didn't expect much from him. Like, I'm just gonna be honest. I, I really didn't expect because he's yeah. a career journeyman. It's like. He wasn't a guy that wasn't, you know, like I said, that come with that mystique of a Todd Gurley who, oh, a thousand yard rusher and 1,500 yards and, you know, 10 touchdowns and all that type of stuff. Like, we don't expect, like, nobody would expect Mike Davis to even do that before he even got to the foul. So right. now that he's had that that career, uh, uh, that, 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 that year, it's like, is it really, like I said, is it, I, I best running back a wide receiver. Hmm. I best running back is a wide receiver. I can't really call Cordell Patterson a running yeah, back. Yeah, I he can't really call him a wide receiver. He, he's a football player, bro. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah, okay. He, yeah, he, he's he's right, a football right. player. Yeah, he he different than the, uh, uh, like he <laughs> runs <laughs> like a running back. <laughs> yeah. He exactly. runs like he runs through people. He running through yeah. people. So I can't really call him a. Is he really? Because one thing, too, about the college game, um, of him playing in college, they use him exactly like this in college. So it's like, I, Cordero Pass is just a different athlete, man. It's like Percy Harvin. You know what I'm saying? Like, per, yeah. Percy Harvin was just a football player. He could do everything return, he can run the yeah. ball, he can catch it. Like, he was everything. So it's like, I think one thing, too, uh, what Mike Davis, um, it's just a different style of offensive line that he's playing um, with. These guys haven't developed yet, and like I said, it's coming. But at this point, at this uh, point in time, what's the use of like trying to force him the ball when you got Cordero Patterson running so well right now? So like, I don't think he's. I, um, but I think it's just Cordero is just so good right now. It makes Mike. All right, what you gonna do next, Mike? It puts a lot of pressure on him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but you know, he still, even when opportunities he gotten, he's not making much with the opportunities. Um, per- personally, I'd rather see the young young boy. Um, oh my God, from Clemson, uh, third string running back. Just, oh, he played. He's playing. He's yeah, oh, he's, he's, getting, he's getting more time. Girl. Yeah, he's yeah I want to see him get more time. I'd rather see him get Mike Davis carried, like. He he brings an element sim, not similar to Patterson, but he brings more speed, explosive, initial burst in the hole. He's not obviously the physical presence of uh, Mike Davis, but at this point, you know, what I mean, we don't. We just need you to get some yards, get more than like two yards to carry. You know, 
like we need you to at least get three and a half something you know i mean just try to you know um i mean let me let me oh i want i want to get the it. problem is, is that go ahead go ahead let me look for something. Uh, i'll just go get it right quick i think the real reason why you're seeing a lot of mike davis as well is too is his pass blocking he he's been yeah. excellent oh, yeah. in pass blocking yeah. So that's why you that's why you still see Davis like that. Yeah. Because out of him, Cordero Patterson, and Wayne Gallman, he's the better pass blocker. I mean, like you said, you would think they would use Keith Smith in that situation, but Keith Smith is not a running back. He's yeah. really not even tight end. He's really a fullback. So you're not gonna get explode get some type of play out of him like that. You're gonna get the little plays out of him. But Mike Davis is picking up some blocks. So that's why you see him. So this is one of those cases where I feel like they might eventually start using Mike Davis as just specifically as a goal line back. Mm. I mean, that's exactly. When you look at his numbers, I'm looking at it here. Um, the Jets game, 13 for 53 with a 4.1 um, average. And you got the Giants, 12 for 50. Then you got Bucks, uh, 9 for 38. Um in the Philly game, for, uh, 15 for uh, uh, 49, almost, you know. Uh, so it's, it's not bad, but it's not great. He hasn't had one of the things. I think the biggest issue, it is just hasn't had that one big breakout run. Mm -hmm. And he's not that type of bat. He's going to get those two, three, four yards. And he's not like, say, it's, it's like Saquon. It's like Saquon Barker. Everybody say Saquon is a is a talented back. I think he's a terrible back, to be honest. I think he's a horrible back. I think he's a horrible back, but he got stupid athleticism. Like, he just get that one run where it's like 50, 60, 70 yards. It's like, okay, damn, this dude is electric. But when you look at Saquon as a running back, he get those one yards and then two yards and then two yards and then three yards and then four yards. And then next thing you know, he got a 90-yard touchdown. And then if – his average goes from 3.3 .3 to 7 point something. You know what I'm saying? So it's – it's he has – Mike Davis hasn't had that one big run like Cordero Patterson. Right. Ooh. Yeah, that, that – I've been, been, say, I've ahead, been saying that about – my bad. I've been saying that about Saquon for the last couple of years now. Yeah, that, that that's kind of where Mike got. Like, that's, a, oh, that's, that's where I got it from. Show. That's exactly what I, I got I had, to, I had to show Mike. <laughs> Because I mm -hmm. like I said when I was looking at his games, um, it was it would be always like like when you look at his games, he'll have like Saquon will go for like twenty five for a buck. He'll go like twenty five <clears throat> for like a buck and thirty, which sounds good. That sounds like a good ass game. Twenty five carries, a hundred and thirty rushing yards, um, one touchdown. That sounds As good. Fact, let me let me look at let me give you these numbers from Saquon. All right. It's almost identical to Mike Davis. All right. It's against the Saints 13 for 52 with a full uh, average, uh, 16 for 51, 3.2, and then 13 for 57. And we got 10 for 26. That sounds that's identical, that damn near identical with a 3.6 uh, average. So it's almost identical. Saquon isn't getting those big home run hits. So it's again when 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 you got a guy like Cordero Patterson who's getting no big runs, that running game is still effective. But the it, it's like it's like when we had Devontae Freeman. We know Devontae Freeman is gonna give us four to five yards every time, and yeah. we needed that big play. Guess who we brought in? Tevin Coleman. Yeah, Tevin Coleman. You see what I'm saying? So, like, yeah. he's effective for the run game in its entirety. But when you talk, when you look at him as an individual, that's where it's like, okay, he's been a letdown. So he's definitely been a letdown as far as our expectations. Um, you know, as far as his, his numbers are concerned, because like I said, you you compare his numbers to what he did uh, with the Panthers, it's like, nah, this is not what we expected. And that's why the Falcons only gave him, and you know. Not too many teams wanted to give him 10, 15, 20 million dollars because they knew, you know, they weren't going to get those big plays. Like when you draft a, a, a running back in the first round, you know, he can get you those big runs, those big plays. Yeah. Mike Davis not going to give you that. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Mm. Go ahead, Marquise. What was you about to say? I ain't mean to interrupt you when I did. Oh no, you good, man. I'm just saying, y'all, y'all coming with the Saquon slander, but I it's think not, I think <laughs> it's not. It's no, not. I, <laughs> so I think I think if all things were equal, which you know it's impossible, I think uh, Saquon is a is a dynamic. Um, <laughs> he's a dynamic athlete, but he's also a hell of a running back. Um, I think his his situation in New York isn't the greatest. You know, I think we definitely have a better offensive structure. He got way better quarterback. We had, we got here. Offensive line is way better. We got how many first rounders? You know, what I mean, we got more talent on the offense to make make. He ain't got to go against a stack box. Mike Davis don't have to go against eight in the box. They know like, okay, he got a quarterback up there. He, he got no name receivers. You can't name a receiver unless you related to him. Um, the quarterback <laughs> is it is Daniel Jones is. I don't even know. We don't know what he is, what he's going to be, but he's not looking too hot, you know. So I think the situation, and this is, you know, I'm just – Saquon, I think, is – either way. I, I get what you're saying as far as, like, the analogy you used, though, for us saying that, hey, you know, he he had these two or three-yard runs, then he break off the 80-yard run. Uh, I don't think Mike Davis got an 80-yard run in him. <laughs> I'd be happy to see him get a 12-yard run. You know what I mean? Just sub. You know what I mean? I just – um but no i mean that's something i think you know it's good dialogue though i think we could agree to yeah. to disagree on um I, I definitely think as you said though mike you did say he got paid for a million we didn't break the bank to go get him we didn't give him no stupid contract um um expectations were kind of high for me because he was coming in as a starter you know we looked at him as a starting running back in the nfl somebody that came and who started last year, majority of the year for the Panthers, and showed the the capability and ability to produce, be a productive running back in this league. And so when we paid him, um, we went to the bargain bin and got him. You know what I mean? Four million a year, and we expected um, production. You know, it, we didn't expect. I don't expect him to be Michael Turner. I don't expect him to be nothing. He's not, but the best version of himself. Um, and with the offensive line we have and the team we have around him. I feel like we can, um, yeah. I feel I just expect a little more. I think my thing with Saquon, my thing with Saquon Barkley is, is 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 kind of the same thing how I look at Julio and how the, how they play their games is they're big as hell, but they run well. Julio doesn't run small. But we just talking about as far as him kind of being like that downfield threat, that big playmaker. Mm -hmm. Saquon is big as he's big as shit, but he runs. He's two thirty six, and he runs like he's one ninety six. And I think that's where these injuries is coming from. Because even in in college, he didn't even he kind of did that, but it wasn't like at the frequency as he's doing now. Now, like I said, like you said, and I kind of agree with you, Marquise. Is it the offensive line is not that great? That could be a possibility. But like I said, I think like with Saquon, I think that's why he's starting to get hurt a little bit more because you jump cutting at 236 pounds and you see how big his damn legs is. Them damn yeah. knees and ankles ain't holding up like that. <laughs> right. That dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like I said, like like I said, I kind I will agree with y'all on that. If Saquon probably would have had a better offensive line, I think we might see a little bit better. But we're just uh-huh. judging it just based off of the situation he's in now, yeah, and I especially agree. when you, especially when you have the expectation of being the second overall pick. Uh-huh. Yeah. Now that expectation is like. Yeah. Oh, now, yeah. Pete, especially now, running back, yeah, that's big. Uh, that's huge. That's a big. That's a big deal. That that's why you don't really see a lot of running backs drafted that high anymore. Like mm-hmm. most of those top running backs are middle. Like they, they're usually like middle first round, late first round, yeah. hell, maybe even second round. Because uh-huh. now you you're putting all you putting all that on him now. Like like before they got Dave Jones, Saquon Barkley. It was all the Saquon Barkley show. That's it. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. it was that's all it was. It was Saquon. So like I said, Saquon would run, he would run the ball 25 times. And those 24 kids and them 20, 
three carries, he have a total of forty some yards. But those two damn carries, he'll go for sixty and the other one is seventy five. Right. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. so yeah, like I said, it it just comes down to what would his career be like if he wasn't with the Giants. Now I know my homeboy, he loved him to so Saquon Barkley because he a Giants fan, but. But I said something like, I think Saquon would be better off outside of the Giants. We'd be in the fight, right? Now. I ain't gonna say we'd be in the fight, but he's on. We gonna be. We gonna be arguing like yeah. <laughs> Hold on, wait a minute. I want to hit. I want to hit this one question here. Hold on, where that Jonathan Man said, "I wish we would have kept Brett Favre. We would have won." Shit, hell no. Nah, we kept Brett Favre. Brett Favre probably wouldn't even be living right now. He'd be in rehab. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, he Favre already not- came. I said he need to get out of uh, Atlanta because he yeah. was he was a junkie. Let's just call that. He was basically a junkie here, man. Right, but Brett yeah, Favre would have Brett, yeah. Brett Favre would have been out of the league in three years, hey. like you said, in, in a rehab facility. That dude, <laughs> yeah, that dude was. Well, he was popping everything. Like he was popping every pill possible. Hey. That dude was doing everything. He was future before future. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Damn junkie. <laughs> I mean, but mm-hmm. like I said, it seemed like I said no, but I kind of figured because he already two hours and damn near 30 mm-hmm. minutes in. Might well go ahead and start widening it down here. Okay. Um, well, can you kind of give your uh your thoughts, man? What's up? I missed that. Your final thoughts? Just give your final thoughts. Oh well, man. I think um, with everything, it's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting game come Sunday. Um, this be our last time before you see see us before uh, before the game. So um, I expect us to go out. Um, I know they coming down. Mm-hmm. Panthers coming off a. Of, they got some. They come with a fight. They got something to prove mm-hmm. this year, this week. Um, especially Sam Darnold being benched. Hopefully, we don't make him look like Joe Montana Jr. Um, or senior, I don't know about but those <laughs> loans won't make him look like Joe Montana, nothing, but uh, um, oh, <laughs> 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 oh man, we, I wasn't we, ready. We gotta, hey, look, 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 we gotta ready. make him see those, he need to be seeing those this <laughs> Sunday, yeah, yeah. We got- <laughs> Sam Darn no does look like the marshmallow man himself though. So <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. I just heard you say Sam Darn no. I said I might well throw that one in. I hey let y'all know uh, that that was not playing. <laughs> well, the That's picture funny. was playing, but it wasn't playing at that moment. I like that. That's dope. That's dope. We should have. We should have dressed up. Hey, shit. I could already. Right, look, I, I, I look like the black chocolate man. That, that, that's what I look like. <laughs> the black chocolate man. Yeah, yeah. You see how fat the the marshmallow man look? Yeah, yeah. That's what I look <laughs> like. But I'm black. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hey, just kidding. No, I don't. I, I know I don't. I'm, 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 I'm awesome. We, but we should have. We should have did a Halloween edition so I could have came dressed as uh, lead better. Ooh, my boat. <laughs> Ask my questions and shit. The mic have mic them. Oh no, no, no. Mike blood pressure will be sky high. Nope. <laughs> uh, That's man, stupid, man. man. I got a question. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. But yeah, um, yeah, that's it, man. That's my final thoughts. But that's that's it. That was great. That was great. I ain't got <laughs> I'm telling you that 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 um ghost picture gotta fuck you up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm like, what the hell? Like I said, I thought I was on perk for a second. Like, what the hell hey. is going on? Like, I know I ain't doing that. Exactly. Hey. Oh, my bad, my bad, man. He just he said he's. He said, he said Sam Darno, and we know Sam Darno is seeing ghosts right now. So you know what you do when you see ghosts? Did it did it did it ghost busters? It is. <laughs> oh my god. Um, oh man. At the end of the day, man. Um like I said, we appreciate everybody for joining us, man. Um, Friday night, man, is a game. We never know what you're gonna get, uh, what we're gonna be talking about, but 
um, you guys continue to support us. We're going to uh, have the the Red Clay Sports Show tomorrow morning. Uh, uh, Magnus will be back. Um, all the guys will be back uh, tomorrow morning, so you guys check that out. Um, just head over to, uh, to Atlanta Falcon Nation, mm -hmm. trying to get to 2,000, trying to get K-Style to 1K. Um, but at the end of the day, man, um, the Falcons have an opportunity to be one game over 500 for the first time in quite some time. Um, so, I, like, I'm, I'm excited for it. Um, I, I think this is – this team is a lot better than what a lot of people even give them credit for. They're a lot more talented. And the crazy part is that a lot of these players haven't fully – grasp of the system defensively or offensively and that's the scary part so when these guys finally get it and we start to give even more talent it, it's going to be this is going to be a very good football team we're getting back to the basics hard nose uh defense um teams are actually saying that this defense is, is is physical now um the running game you know it's not what we want it to be but we're committing to the run um kyle pitts has yet to really grasp the NFL game, but he's still playing out of his damn mind. And when he go to his first offseason and pick up a little bit of weight and try to figure out exactly what he need to do to get through the NFL season, that cat gonna be something that he's he gonna be something nasty, man. That dude's gonna be a problem. So at the end of the day, man, we continue to thank you all for Supporting us, man. We won't give you nothing but the facts, the stats, and the truth. Y'all already know what it is. K Styles, give them a little something, something, something. Before yeah. I give them a little something, something, too, I want to also give appreciation to everybody that's tuned in with us. Um, like I said, y'all make sure y'all show everybody some love that's on this screen. Like I said, Atlanta Falcon Nation is not just us, it's everybody that watches, and everybody that comments, and everybody that leaves feedback. At the end of the day, it's all about the conversation. If you're not willing to have the conversation and be respectful about it, take your ass somewhere else. <laughs> because that's the end. It's just simple. Just, just, just take your ass somewhere else. Like I said, like I said, we don't, like I said, you seen what DP did to D-Led today. <laughs> don't be coming over here looking for that stuff because I'm, I'm gonna say this one last thing. Why? Right. I did. I did some scouting. I did. I did oh, some scouting. God. Oh God! You know all this. You know all the stuff that we get as far as the people that be coming on our videos and talking shit and blah 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 blah. blah. Tell me why we the only Falcon content creators that get that. Hmm. I hmm. wonder. I hmm. wonder. But we're gonna leave that for another day. Oh. But like I said, like I said, we appreciate everybody tuning in. Like I said, you make sure you subscribe to AFN, get us to the two K side of the game, K styles, six man K styles. Um, let's go six hundred. Um, ninety nine away, well, eighty nine away from that. So I definitely be looking for y'all to keep your boy, keep your boy running, man. Like I said, y'all been. Showing me some love already. Like I said, you continue to leave your questions, not only for Mike, not only for me, but Marquise and everybody else at AFN. I mean, we mm -hmm. definitely want to answer your questions. We want to get the knowledge and have the conversation. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, this is what it's all about. This is what we do. But until then, as I go and watch these Braves, I think we're still up one nothing. My yeah. phone died, so I can't I can't see shit. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, I got but like I said, until next time, AFN, we ain't here to play. We here to stay. You ain't gotta go home. But you gotta get the hell out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are right. Holla, 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 holla. holla. <laughs>